Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production with your hosts, Mark, Bob, and Wade. This week, the triune of truculents bend their minds to the modern-day Pandora's box that is Bob's Fridge. Please prepare to hold thy gorge and enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome to the Distractable Podcast. Here we discuss anything that interests us and compete to see who can bring the most captivating stories to the table. Whoever brings the best story, as judged by yours truly, will be declared the winner of the podcast and will earn the right to host next week's episode and play the role of a judge. Being as I, you know, killed it last week, I get to host this week. And I am Wade Barnes, joined by my lovely, beautiful co-hosts, Mark Fishbach and Bob Meiskins. Hey, guys. You almost forgot how to say my name, didn't you? I did. I did. <laughs> I could tell. I was like, Bob. <laughs> you really take on a fascinating cadence when you do the intros. Like, I won't criticize it because like, it does work, but it's just... It's, it's just very... It's very bouncy. All right. You want me to try it again? Here we go. <laughs> I don't want you to try it again. Hey, guys. Podcast time. I'm Wade. This is Mark and Bob. Let's go. <laughs> I hope someday we're like hanging out or just like doing something really casual and everyone's being normal. And at some point, Wade is just like, whoa, guys. Hey. <laughs> he just like starts the cadence and everyone is like, wait, why are you reading a script right now? So let me tell you about this story I experienced last <laughs> week when I went to the grocery store and had to buy milk. Who wants to play some beer pong? Let's get the cups ready. <laughs> Line them up. I'm ready to play. House rules. Bounces are two cups. You can swap, but... Only on a bounce. <laughs> Blowing is allowed. I feel like I'm slowly devolving into game show host version of John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> All right there, pilgrims. <laughs> Welcome to Distractable. Uh, do you ever, uh, this just happened. Do you ever laugh or talk and the voice that comes out of you scares your own self? <laughs> yes. Uh, my voice is like a little horse and I just laughed and my whole body was like, whose laugh was that? What the hell? <laughs> Oh, man. Have you ever felt like a spider wave of saliva in your throat and you go to speak and it like blocks your vocals and you sound like something completely different and you're oh, like, oh, yeah. and then you go, oh, but it's still there blocking. You're like, oh, no, and you're really scared. And then like the bubble pops and you're like, oh, I'm back. Yeah, no, I have that a lot. But what if it actually is just like you're so funny at one point, the demon standing behind you chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so we're not even into the episode yet. Have you guys have you guys ever heard a voice like if you're laying in bed, you're trying to fall asleep. Have you ever heard a voice that wasn't your voice in your head? Does that happen to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The thing that happens to me sometimes is I'll just be like almost asleep. And then like my body is just like, you're going to die one day. And it's going to be terrible. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm awake. But it, like, it still sounds like me, but it's like Dick Wade. Okay. I only ever hear my own voice like 99% of the time. But I was trying to fall asleep the other night and I was just thinking about the day and like, you know, whatever. Something stressed me out. I don't know. And I was just laying there and I heard it sounded like it came from across the room. It was not Mandy. She was asleep. I just heard a voice that said exactly what I was thinking that was like, that's not something you need to be upset about. Like it was my mom or something, but it wasn't oh, my, wow. it wasn't anyone's voice that I recognized. It was just like a woman's voice. Yeah. I didn't sleep for like a few hours after that because my entire body was just like, what the fuck? Is that a thing that happens to other people more yeah. normally? Am I weird? I mean, I've had it happen all the time. It, it, like, it's either an auditory hallucination or it's just your brain just being like, here's a voice randomly. Ooh. But no, I've had that. I've had people whisper like inches from my ear when oh. I'm like either waking up or I'm going straight to bed. Uh. And it'll just be it'll just be someone saying hello and it'll be like, fucking Christ. Uh, I don't like that. I hear That's bad. Doors opening and closing. I hear it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I've like felt my grandma's hand on my shoulder. My grandma who passed away in like 2005. Occasionally I'll like smell her perfume or like she was a smoker. So sometimes like, I can smell the smoke or something. But I'll feel her hand on my shoulder like oh, a guardian angel type thing. Weird. I wouldn't like that. I would turn around and be like, fuck off, grandma. Like in moments of extreme <laughs> stress or like there's been moments like where I'm driving and someone will swerve at me. Like obviously we got hit by the semi. But like other than that, there's been a few moments where like something I should not have seen. I'll like just barely dodge and I'll feel like she like pushed my hands to help me turn away from it or something which is really weird no those are grasping out at you from the beyond like you're coming to me now oh just miss 
missed you. Oh, my God. She, she was pulling the other way. Like, oh, die, die. Come back to me. Oh, I'll get you next time. Some douchebag uncle that always hated you pops up. And Grandma's trying to save you. And the uncle's like, nah, come on. Stare him into it. Come on. Yeah, come on. You want to visit with your grandson, don't you? Come on, I'll bring him to see you. All of this supernatural discussion has me excited for today's topic, which is... Delivery. <laughs> oh, right, right, yeah. Right. Topical. What a segue. Right? Delivering you to the beyond as fast as possible. Gotcha, I understand. We're kind of cheating a little bit today because our topic comes, I feel like it's already kind of a biased topic, but Bob had a heck of an experience and we're so excited. Mark and I were so excited to hear how happy he was about it. Yeah. That we had to change our topic last minute. Yeah. From a very other good one that we definitely had planned in advance yeah. to deliver. Bob, if you're ready, I will yield my time to you if you well, want. Well, so, yeah. So, are you going to try and compete with this, Mark? Or are we just no, going to let God, this happen? No, no. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let that roll. <laughs> I have something else for it, but I want to I want to hear this. I still reserve the right to a, 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 to a, 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 a points <laughs> where I want okay. them. God, <laughs> the authority is just leaking out of you. <laughs> Hey, I'm in charge, and I can stumble, stutter my way through a sentence if I want to. This is my episode. Maybe it was my uncle trying to shut me up. He was shoving a ghost sock in my mouth right there. All right, yeah, I yield. I yield my time. All right. Uh, there's a story about a new refrigerator. We got a deal on it. Honestly, we saved $1,000 on it because it was a big Come sale, on. and I'm pretty proud of that. But I want to preface this by saying this is a very first world problem. So with all your, I hear everyone out there thinking like, oh, no, my new refrigerator didn't go so smooth. How dare you? I listen to this podcast on my iPhone. Shut up. And I can't even afford a refrigerator. Shut your mouth. I know it's a first world problem. So Manny and I have, we live in a new house. We recently bought a house which is very uh, exciting but stressful. And the refrigerator in our house, it keeps it kept things cold. It's gone now. He's dead, so I don't have to talk about him in the present tense. It kept things cold, but it was stinky. <laughs> He's dead. He's dead. He got taken away. He's unplugged. <laughs> oh, he's dead. He's going to go get crushed up. Was your refrigerator a person? <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of an asshole, so... Just like a cadaver that you stored things in? Just an old man in the back turning a crank, like, I'll keep your food cold for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me live back here. If I'd shower, I wouldn't stink so bad. Let me shower. That old man in the back is probably why the food that came out of that thing was so freaking stanky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And, like, it's just an old fridge. It's not like I'm not saying anything about the person who lived here before us, but the water that came out of it, the ice, the food, it just had a stank. Cleaning didn't fix it. The baking soda and the thing didn't fix it. it. So we got a new one. And like, that's pretty exciting. A new fridge is exciting. You know, no one has stored their dog semen in it before. <laughs> that is a very specific <laughs> qualification. I'm not saying that I know I've lived in a house with a fridge where there was dog semen stored in it. I'm just saying if you live in a rental, especially, you don't know what was in that fridge before. I, you know, he's got a point, man. Well, I decide is that. Is there any amount of cleaning that makes it okay for you to eat a piece of lunch meat that fell out of the bag and touched the shelf where once in years past, a little vessel of dog semen sat? I don't know if that's okay. I don't know. It's like the same equivalent of you have no idea what went on in your hotel bed. Yeah. Like you have no idea what kind of freaks were in there just before you, what kind of fluids were flinging all over the walls. Yeah. You don't know. Careful what you lick in a hotel room. That's all I'm saying. You know me. I lick every corner of the room. I have to as soon yeah. as I walk into a room. That's how it feels like home. That's how you adjust. <laughs> So we're excited about this new fridge. Yeah, yeah, good. So it was supposed to be delivered nine days ago, and I bought it like two weeks ago now. They took my money happily, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you a fridge. And I was like, okay, and left like an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Did you get to pick it out, or did they just tell you they'd bring you one? Yeah, no, I told them which one I wanted, and they were like, sure, silver one, got it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> we'll send it right over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the initial delivery is scheduled. So the guys show up. Honestly, the first guy, well, I spoiled some of it, but the first team that showed up to deliver our refrigerator, <laughs> the first they show team. up and they assess the house. Our front door is real big, but there's a little door that goes in the kitchen that you can't bring the fridge through. So he like looks at the garage and finally he decides, okay, we got to drag this thing. We have a big back sliding door. We got to drag this thing around the side of the house through the side yard and then in the back door. That's the way it'll fit easiest. And so we have two side yards because I'm filthy rich mm -hmm. <laughs> not not a one side yard house we had two whole side <laughs> yards and they decide to go through the really narrow one which becomes an issue later which we'll get to and so they go through this whole thing that i don't know what appliances what happens to them but they're packed like if outside air touches them 
they will combust. What? Appliances are, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a brand new appliance. It comes in a full like plastic wrap, like fully vinyl wrapped. And then there's like foam padding on the corners and above that. And then there's another layer of like strapped on padding or cardboard. And then there's another layer of like a wrapping around that. And then there's a box around that. So when they show up to bring it, it takes them like 10 minutes to get the thing down off the truck and cut the outer layers of packaging off to get it ready to bring it inside. And so they go through this whole thing. And once they decide they're going to bring it through the smaller side yard, the narrow side yard, I look at it and I'm like, I don't think that's going to fit, guys. And he looks at it and he measures it and he's like, no, no, it'll fit. And I'm standing there and I'm like, I really don't think that's going to fit. But like, this is their job. It's fine. Just do what you're going to do. Which again, like an idiot, I assume that they would know how to do their job. And so they start dragging it. They bring it up the driveway. They start trying to get it through the gate. There's like a gate that swings open and the gate is swung all the way open up against the gap gas meter the mm. gas meter is behind the gate and you hope like ideally they'd like slide it right through it fits and and they keep going right mm. they get it up and it does that thing where they try to move it through and it just goes Dunk. and it's like oh 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 oh, oh. <laughs> hey, oh, oh. <laughs> and like the delicate parts are all still wrapped so it's still like padded but i just see like it's not quite gonna fit like it's like an inch too big yeah and the guys are there and they're like no it's gonna fit and it's and it, it goes from the the soft dunk to like they're finagling it. The way it goes through the gate, the fucking the back of the fridge is scraped up the whole gate. Each little step they're taking, the fridge on the fence is just like and, and I'm standing here watching, just like ah, ah. okay. It, and like it finally it gets through and I look at it, there's no damage, everything's fine. It was just sort of rubbing on the gate. I think it was fine, but I'm so this is how it starts. And they get it through, they get all the way to the backyard before they're about to bring it inside the house, and I look at the front of it. And there's a huge dent. Oh. It's not huge. Okay, maybe it's a two-inch-ish around dent. But I look at it, and I'm like, that's a dent. And the guy does that thing where he looks, and he's like, oh, that's not a dent. These things are padded. It's fine. And I, like, touch it. And I'm like, no, dude, that's a dent. It's clearly a dent. And he, like, licks his thumb and rubs it. And, like, <laughs> no, that'll, like, that'll buff out. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Yeah, what, a, what a method. And so and finally, I convinced the dude. I'm like, it's a dent. And he's like, well, do you want us to install it or not? I'm like, no, I don't want a brand new refrigerator I just paid a shit ton of money for to have a dent on it. Like, I want a new one out of the box. I paid a lot of money for this fucking thing. And, like, he, he does that thing that, like, and I've totally been there. I've, I've worked jobs like this. He does that, gives me that look when I'm like, no, I don't take it back. Like, I don't want to fix this. He's like okay we can fix it <laughs> in a more respectful tone he says whatever he says but his eyes are saying that you know he looks right at yeah, me yeah. and I, his head flops over and he's just like yeah yeah fine we'll put it back on the truck <laughs> thanks and man did they not give a fuck about that fridge once it was damaged so <laughs> how it barely fit through the gate the first time on the way out they were just like gosh like, get it out fuck get out of here like man i thought they damaged my gate like jesus and they got it out of there and they were just like we'll take it back and they'll call you and they drove off in a huff. Yeah. And I thought that was that. Now, let me say, this is going to be the end of Act 1. <laughs> These guys did a great job compared to the second group of delivery people. Like, I miss them. Oh, no. I wish they oh, would have no. been the guys who delivered the fridge today. Because, of course, this happened this morning. Because, of course, it did. <laughs> I long for their great handling of everything <laughs> that occurred. <laughs> but yeah so they're gone and you think like okay that exchange is over right yeah there's a fallout to that exchange that i still barely i can't understand how this happened so manny and i wake up the next morning after that initial delivery where it was dented and we and we asked him to take it back the house is freezing we live in northern california right so it gets it, was, it got down to like 45 degrees that night mm -hmm. and we usually leave the heat on kind of low, so when we wake up, it's not like in the 40s. It's like maybe 65 degrees, whatever. We woke up, and the house was like completely unheated. Nothing at all. That's weird. I look at the thermostat. The thermostat says it's on. Went to like take a shower, use the sinks. No hot water at all. Hmm. And we're just like, what the fuck? That's so weird. None of the natural gas things in our house were working. Somehow, our gas line had been damaged. 
And of course, right away, Mandy was like, well, those delivery guys were here yesterday. Did they do something? Oh. And I was like, no, what would they have done? They were only wedging a, a heavy fridge <laughs> through a gate that was leaning up against our gas meter. What would they have done? <laughs> and I'm looking around, I'm looking at the water heater, I'm looking at the HVAC system like, man, this is so fucking weird. I'm trying to like relight the pilot light in the HVAC and like, and I come back in and she's like, you should look at like the gate area. Like those guys had to have done something. And I went and I looked and like, it's not, it's not obviously damaged. And I smell, there's no like gas leaking or whatever. It doesn't seem bad, but clearly it's not working. Mm -hmm. Apparently in California on a lot of gas meters, there's a safety precaution. They put something on there that's called an earthquake detector. And if it detects a rumble, if it detects a shaking it shuts off the gas to the entire house. Oh. And I guess it's sensitive enough that two guys slamming a heavy wooden <laughs> gate into it and a couple hundred pound fridge into it was enough that it was like, nope, no more gas, shutting that down. They delivered a fridge so violently your house thought it was an earthquake? Yes. All right, cool, just wanted clarity. <sighs> And this was the good team. Yeah, they did a great job. I love those guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just check it off my notes uh -huh. here. Got yeah. it. Okay. So, okay. And so finally we get that resolved after like a day of me. I had like called an HVAC company and was like, I need to, you guys got to fix this. And they were like, okay, we could have a guy there in a week. And I was like, what? what? I just told you we don't have natural gas. It's like 50 degrees outside. Like, can you get a hurry up a little? Does anyone, you know, volunteer to give me a spot in line or something? And she's like, no, no, we'll see you in a week. And I like, that was the best solution I had until we figured out the whole thing. Can we call this to the cold man? Can we make a series? Oh, well, hey, there, there's some flooding. Don't even worry, man. This is a whole saga. This was this morning? <laughs> yes. Oh, my you God. No fucking idea, man. I. <laughs> okay, so this middle act is kind of quiet, right? So the natural gas thing happened. And then there's a whole week where every day I'm calling the store to be like, hey, you guys tried to deliver us a fridge and it was dented and like you took it back. Like, when do we get the next one? Like, when can we get an idea? I spent an hour and 17 minutes on the phone to the store. I went back and looked because I was shocked and I never spoke to a human a single time. <clears throat> I mean, it's Lowe's. I don't fucking care. We're not sponsored by Lowe's. It's Lowe's, right? It's like a big appliance, hardware, home improvement store. Yeah. There's like 50 people, I don't know, 20 people, however many that work there. I was calling a specific department where there's supposed to be a person. I called 11 times. Over the entire course of a day, every time I had a spare five minutes, I'd call and be like, maybe I'll get someone now. And I didn't talk to a person the whole day. And their phone loop goes, you call an automated system, ask who you want to connect to. The phone rings in the department you call for a solid five minutes. Then you're connected back to the automated service who just does the exact same shit and reconnects you to the same phone that rings for another five minutes. And then after you do that a third time, when the phone stops ringing, it just goes boop and hangs up and that's it <laughs> do you think they've got like a system in place where they saw who was calling it's like the delivery guy put a note on your file and it was like dented fridge guy and they're like mm, don't take that one we're not taking that call i don't know man i would love for that to be the case i mean just with everything these days it's exactly that and it was like me trying to call my pharmacy for a prescription i needed was that exact thing except plus they have this five minute long like covid vaccine disclaimer oh, that is at the beginning of every call and i get it very important for people to know, and I get they probably have a lot of people calling, like, when can I get it or where can I get it? Stuff like that, and the information all needs to be presented. But I just need to talk to my pharmacist about a prescription, and it's the same thing. Loop through to the pharmacy, it rings, goes back to the machine, it goes back to the department, rings three times, and then the same boot. I know that boot. Boop, boop, yeah. boop. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> the same thing i get that like if you're not reaching someone there has to be like an end point they yeah. don't just want you to infinitely but god like get an answering machine or something like fuck seinfeld had an answering machine yeah it did. that's true how does lowe's <laughs> not have an answering machine even if you don't check it i always feel like people exaggerate when they say how long they deal with these automated systems but i know i've been in this exact same boat it is just a fact of life that if you have to call a business expect so, to have three hours of your day just aren't they supposed fuck. to save time that's what i don't get they're supposed to save time their time 
Not ours. Not your time. Oh, <laughs> Saves time because no one on the other end has to even answer it. You get so frustrated, you give up, and they're like, oh, thank God, and we didn't have to talk to that person. In the olden days. God, am I fucking old? Like, what get off my wall. <laughs> Just like when there was music playing, at least you had something to listen to, and you, you knew you were waiting, and you could put it on speakerphone and back that. You didn't have to go over, rush over, like, ha, ha, the pharmacy! Oh, I talked to the <laughs> pharmacy! Did you hear me? Yeah. Pharmacy! I reached that point. I hope they record that. <laughs> <laughs> with the automated system the first time i'm like oh uh, yeah i'm trying to reach like appliances and then you'd be like connecting you to appliances and like the, <laughs> the sixth time i was like fucking appliances and she was like <laughs> connecting your new appliance <laughs> can you imagine if like 911 had an automated system like that <laughs> for class one emergencies press one for class two emergencies press two stay on the line if this is a major emergency what's your problem <laughs> i'm bleeding boop, 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 boop. <laughs> connecting you to <laughs> for bleeding try calling 911 and your extension will be 67942 <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever experienced this there are a couple places i think lexi's vet and somewhere else that i call have like the same hold system they have the yeah. same music and i always get put on hold when i have to talk to these people and literally it's like in my head like like and every time it comes on my brain is just like ah, ah, ah. drama god like at least get a playlist how hard is it to get like 10 songs and have a playlist for your hold music it's the same two and a half minute long shit and it's the same song the whole time there's not even like a difference it's like two sections there's an a and a b and they're not even that different. Yeah, I'm like, they, they, they're like, we'll play some relaxing music. And it's at max volume. <laughs> yeah, and then the person that answers the phone is like whispering. And you can't hear them at all because you've been listening to blaring music for half an hour. <laughs> you have the music on and you turn it way down. And then a person gets on. And they're like, and you're like, fuck, God damn it. <laughs> A fucking headache from your 38,000 decibel hold music. Now I can't hear you. I want some chicken sandwiches. And they're either so pleasant it makes you more mad because you've been waiting so long, or they're just like so nonchalant. Like there's no in between. They're either way too nice or way too apathetic. There's no in between. Yeah, I once called when they had, you know how they, the, we value your call, but it, it was someone at the place that recorded that. So they picked up the phone like, <laughs> <laughs> we value your call. <laughs> Please keep waiting. <laughs> like, legitimately, like, they just stopped mid-bite to say this. <laughs> oh, I left that out. So in the low, in the cycle that I was caught in, that was part of it. As the, <laughs> as the phone is ringing for like five minutes, in the middle of that, there's a computer voice that comes on and like, we really value your call. We're trying our best to answer it. And then it goes back to ringing. <laughs> and like, I, yeah. I probably started talking to that dumb piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> i would love if all these different companies recorded like all of that so we could just hear playback of everyone getting so fed the fuck up with waiting that we just hear them like yeah you value my fucking club i value my foot up your ass <laughs> stupid computer you know amazon is recording all the things from alexa so you know they've got all that somewhere it's out there man it's on the cloud man it's gonna be leaked one day and we're gonna have a really fun listen <laughs> yeah okay so there are multiple days of that. Suffice it to say, finally, we learn that we're going to get a refrigerator. It's going to come. It's going to come nine days after it was initially supposed to be there. Whatever. But fine. Like, you know what? Fine. It's just, it's not like we needed it right away. It's just a refrigerator. We'll get it and it'll be fine. <sighs> so that leads us to this morning, which initially we were supposed to get together earlier this morning. And when we were setting that up, I was like, I don't know. I got this thing. I'm going to be busy. I'll let you guys know. And last night, they sent me a message, a text message that was like, expect your delivery between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. tomorrow. And I was like, okay, that's a four-hour window, so it'll probably come at the least convenient part, but like, I'll set that window aside. That'll be fine. And this morning, I was literally on a call with you guys. We were getting ready to do exactly what we're doing right now, and my phone starts ringing, and it's like a local number, which I know means it's the delivery guys. An hour and 40 minutes before they're supposed to be at my house, it's the delivery guys. And I pick it up and he's like, we'll be there in 10 minutes. And I'm like, why did the system tell me 
11 to 3 then and he's like i don't know sir we're on our way and i'm like this is incredibly inconvenient can you come at the time that you're scheduled and he was like nope we're on our way <laughs> and i literally to you guys i was like okay i gotta go i guess we'll do this later <laughs> right okay bye <laughs> schedules are for nerds <laughs> so that's how it starts and they show up yeah, and the yeah. guy of course I mean, I get, I'm sure customers all the time try and tell these dudes like, oh, this is the deal. Here's what you should do. And they're like, no, no, no. I know what I need to do. He gets there and I'm like, okay, so we already tried to deliver this. You guys can't come in through the front. There's a door that it won't fit through. So you kind of have to go around back. I'll show you. And he's like, what do you mean we can't come in through the front? And I'm like, Ooh. I mean, we've, we've been here. Literally, I did this nine <laughs> days ago. I'm just saving you some time. It won't fit. And he's like, nah, nah, let me measure it. <laughs> and I'm like, Fine. But also, like, fuck you. <laughs> like, goddamn. <laughs> oh. So he comes in and he looks and he measures the little door into the kitchen. He measures the garage door and he looks at me. He's like, oh, yeah, it's definitely not going to fit through here. And I look at him and I'm like, uh huh, do you want to see the side yard? <laughs> this has already been over a week of me being pissed at these people for not communicating and being pissed at the first guys for the gas line thing. I'm not being rude, but I'm already on this fuse of like, just put it in. Just give us the fridge and get out of here. I'm busy. And so I like, I show him the side yard. And so I don't know how to take care of a yard yet. Manny and I have never lived in a place where we had to take care of the whole yard. We have like mm. a fenced in yard here. The side yard is grassy. It's not supposed to be there, but you know how it's like weeds basically. Right. And they grew really tall. I haven't touched them. It's a, we don't really go over there. I haven't taken care of it. If I was a good responsible homeowner, I would have like trimmed all that grass or I don't know, sprayed weed killer or something. We get over there. It's just grass, right? It's grass, tall grass. We get over there and he's like, oh, oh, I hope we can get through here as we're casually strolling through this three foot tall, dead, thin grass. He's like, I don't know, can you trim this? And I was like, well, I thought I had an hour and a half before you were going to be here. That was on my list. It's too late now. But yes, he makes every fucking thing that happens. This dude is like, oh, God, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, just bring the fridge. So I open the gate to the side thing and they brave the jungle that is our side yard. <laughs> After they spend 20 minutes cutting all of the seven layers of packaging off the fridge out in the street, they come and they drag it around. And so we have a fridge in there and it already has a water line because it has an ice maker. And so you have to, to take it out to put the new one in. You have to pull it out. You have to undo the water line. There's supposed to be some kind of shutoff. These guys cannot find the shutoff to the water line. Mm. And he looks at me and he's like, do you know how to do this? And I'm like, I don't know. Is it my fucking job to install a refrigerator? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> And like, he looks at me, he's like, there should be a shut off. You should know where that is. I'm like, bro, I just fucking bought this house. Why would I know anything about that? I didn't install it. And he was like, can you call the previous homeowner? Like, yeah, let me call her up. We're buddies. I bought her house and now we get dinner every two weeks. Obviously. Ah. So his solution, his brilliant solution is he just unhooks the water and the water is just like, <laughs> spray and he just kinks the line real quick like he unhooks it and he knows it's not shut off and he's all surprised that water starts spraying everywhere and so he just kinks the line and i'm like okay well let's just hold the line kinked and that'll be fine and he holds it up to me and is like i'm gonna need you to hold this so we can finish and i'm like you know what fine fine i'm not gonna make a joke about this or be angry fine do this, get that fucking thing out of here, bring the other one in here, plug in the whatever, let's do this. And so I'm standing in my own kitchen holding a water line with a bucket under it because it's even kinked off. It's still dripping, right? So I'm holding a little bucket yeah. to make sure we don't mm -hmm. get any water everywhere. There's a front window in the kitchen so I can see they bring the old one out. I see them go out to the front where their truck is and they're doing stuff. And then I see them with the new refrigerator and they bring it around. And so I know they're like on the way. I kind of see what they're making progress. Yeah. And then while I'm standing in the refrigerator, the back slider is open and I'm just standing there with the stupid kinked hose that I can't leave. And I just hear from the backyard, like kerching whoosh. And then one guy goes, Oh shit. <laughs> and they just start rushing around. And I just, and I'm just standing here. Like I can't go look. 
I don't know what's happening. It sounds like water is leaking. I have no idea where that would be coming from. They don't come in. They don't come ask me anything or like do anything so that I can help. They're just rushing around back there like, oh, what, the thing? what if you did that? Like I can kind of hear what they're doing. And Mandy is like working. Like it's the middle of a Friday. Mandy is busy working. So I can't just be like, hey, come help. I stand there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes before I finally text Mandy and I'm like, I know you're busy, but some fucking terrible thing is happening. Like, please, you come just hold this so I can try and like help these idiots. And so she comes out and she's like, this is an inconvenience for her. I walk out there and there's water is erupting up out of the ground like a geyser has started gushing. I don't know what has happened. Apparently what genius number two did is they had the fridge on a dolly <laughs> wide ways, right? So it's the widest way it could be to drag it around. And there was a bush. They were trying to drag it through this little path that's like, it's like a sidewalk width. It's not a wide path, but it's wide enough if the refrigerator was sideways, it probably would have fit right through. They were going to drag it through wide ways and apparently just fucking destroy this bush. But also apparently inside this bush is a PVC pipe coming out of the ground. That's part of like the irrigation system that I have no idea the details of it because it's been here since uh, God knows when it's super old. And it's honestly, it's on my list of like, I need to have like a professional come look. This irrigation system is kind of old and janky. I don't know if it still works right or whatever. Like he just sees the bush and is like, fuck that bush. What he did was he dragged the fridge right through the bush and snapped off the fucking PVC pipe. And there's just a geyser of water coming up out of the ground. And what they were doing when I went out there, which is apparently what they had been doing the whole 10 minutes, is one of them was standing there staring, like thinking, and the other one had the broken off <laughs> PVC pipe. It was trying to like jam it back on, like it was just going to slip right back on. <laughs> <laughs> and like they looked over at me and were like like he he might as well i don't remember what he said because i the rage started boiling at this point inside of me but he looked over at me and like <laughs> blankly looked at me and gestured at the water and looked at the water and looked back at me like i'm gonna fucking fix it <laughs> like i magically know what the hell is happening and how to fix this Taking cleansing breaths, <laughs> punching my fists a little too hard, digging my nails into my palms, kind of hurts. Oh, okay. God. Yeah. So, like, literally, they did this. And the one guy who, apparently, the guy who was standing there watching is the one who did it. And he looked at me and he was like, I can't believe that pipe was in there. It was hidden in there. And I just, is it an accident, you know? And like, I wish I had said this, but it's not like it's a little, it's not grass. It's not a flower or something. You could like, Ooh, push it over and scooch. It's a big fucking bush to get the thing <laughs> through where he got it through. He literally had to pull it up to that gap and it stopped. And he was like, Ooh, this bush is in the way. And he was just like, no, it's not. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> <laughs> I, I don't know this. what led them to that action, but there's no version of that that's not just so fucking stupid that it makes me un unbelievably angry. And I can even right now, and that's, this has just happened a few hours ago now. I'm still so mad. Oh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> no, it's good. No, it's not. I can't. I don't know, man. Like, I couldn't even. And so this leads to a whole series of, like, finally, I'm like, we need to shut the water off to the house, you fucking idiots. Like, you're not going to wedge that pipe back on there. It snapped off. Doesn't fit back on. There's no super glue. There's no flex tape. We got to turn the water off to the whole house. And so the guy who seemed to be in charge of this was like, right, right, right. The water main. And he handed me the pipe and was like, hold this on there. Like that was going to do something like he was holding it on there. And you know, when you have a hose and you put your thumb over it and the water sprays out, that's what he was doing. He was not keeping any water inside of anything. He was just holding this pipe down and spraying water fucking everywhere. And he was like, you hold this. I'll go do the, and I like took it from him and I did it for a minute, but I was standing there like, 
this isn't doing anything. <laughs> like, as I was doing it, I was like, he said, hold it. I'm going to hold. Why would I hold this? What is this doing? <laughs> and eventually I just set it down and walk out front. And he's like on the street. So the way water service works generally, I think in America, there's like a line that runs sort of along your street. If you're in like a suburban area, each house has like a line that comes off that main line that goes into the house. And so down where that connection is, where like your water meter might be, there's usually like a master shut off, like a main thing. But also, I didn't know this because I've not owned a house that had this before. I've only ever lived in apartments and townhouses or rentals where it wasn't my thing. Apparently, there's also always a main water shutoff inside the house. And so the one down by the street was like really difficult. It wouldn't budge. It was like seized up. This house was built in the 70s. It's fairly old. And so this pipe has been down here for a long time. And this dude is just like wanging away on it with a wrench and sprayed it with WD-40, and he's asking me if I have tools, which, like, I get that it's not part of his job to have to shut off the main water to a house, yeah. but these dudes literally were looking at me like I was their boss. <laughs> Every step of the way, they were like, it's not turning. Both turn and look at me. What do we do? <laughs> and I'm standing here like, this doesn't seem like how you would stall a fridge. <laughs> I don't know. I have different expectations. I'm as confused as you are. More probably. <laughs> oh. Oh and so eventually, like, I'm sitting here Googling on my phone. Dummy number one and dummy number two are, like, hitting the pipe with a wrench, doing nothing, looking at each other. <laughs> nothing. Eventually, I'm Googling, and I find some stuff that's, like, there should be a, an outdoor shutoff, and there should be an indoor shutoff. And I go start looking around my house frantically for any sort of valve I can shut off. Finally, after a solid half hour of water fucking destroying my backyard, yeah. flooding our patio. By the way, they left the, the brand new fridge that they had bragged back there. Mm. He got it a full three feet away from the water explosion before he <laughs> set the fridge down and was like, ah, let me fix this. So this fridge is literally sitting in a muddy puddle getting sprayed <laughs> with water for half an hour. Which, to be fair, I did not think of either, but I'm I'm out here like my mind is exploding with rage <laughs> that these guys just fucking broke because it's not fixed still. So, like, my house is no longer flooding. Well, my patio, whatever, it's dramatic. So, finally, I turn the water off, and everyone, everything calms down for a second. And I look at these guys, and they look pretty shaken because, like, sure, what did, what did they just do? <laughs> and I look at them, and I'm like, okay, so how do we fix this? Like, do you have a plumber that you call? You call your boss? Like you did this how do you <laughs> fix this and he looks at me and he's like uh I, you're gonna have to talk to lowe's about that apparently these <laughs> fucking guys don't even work for lowe's they work for a third party company that lowe's contracts to deliver and i'm like at this point everything's calming down a little i'm still so mad that i'm like they looked like they were a little scared of me because my face was not in, in, in pleasant <laughs> But I'm like, okay, I'm going to call Lowe's. You guys go do the fucking thing. Put the fridge in there. I'm going to call Lowe's. I call. And my first thought is, okay, I'm going to get into the infinite loop of no one's going to answer, right? Because I just did this for a whole week. I call and miraculously a human answers the phone. And I explain like, hey, you're guys are here delivering a fridge they ripped a thing out of the ground and flooded my backyard and there's an active water leak how do we fix this and they said i should contact you and he's like uh yeah just one second and puts me on hold right away like doesn't even let me respond so i'm on hold for a couple minutes comes back he's like okay i i talked to my manager uh so what we have to do is you give me your information like your name and your address and whatever and we will initiate contact with the company that we contracted to do the delivery and in my mind i'm like wait 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 wait, wait. i'm talking to the guys who work for the company who just <laughs> damaged my house and they said i should talk to you so the process is they direct me to you who make contact with them on my behalf it's a whole thing at this point, I'm like, all the water's off to our entire house, right? Sinks don't work, no running water whatsoever. Hopefully this will be fixed fast, like tomorrow, maybe today if we're lucky. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, so we'll make contact. And then within 24 to 48 hours, they will reach out to you and start the process of getting it scheduled to get this fixed. And I'm like, okay, you understand the water is off to my entire house right now. It's not acceptable that maybe within 48 hours, maybe we can start the process of maybe getting this fixed. And the guy's like, 
uh, well, uh, that's uh, this is the process. This is the process. And I literally, at this is the point where I start to lose <laughs> it. Like, I generally, I'm super cordial. I've been a delivery driver. I've worked in food service. I know what it's like when people are totally shitty to you and you have to try and maintain, you know, decorum. You have to try and be professional. Mm -hmm. I, so even when people are terrible to me, I'm always like, oh, you know, I appreciate that. Like, try and be nice. And I say to this dude, like, what the fuck do you mean this is the pro? You hear me, right? Your company just damaged my house mm -hmm. unrelated to what you're doing. I start swearing at this dude. I start saying like, what the fuck? Like this shit is, my shit is broken right now. My fucking house doesn't have water. And he literally, I think I broke him a little. And he literally pauses and is like, oh, uh, um, do you not want to do this process? Because this is the only process. <laughs> and like, I almost fucking threw my phone. <laughs> and I get that this one random dude at the store is not going to fix my problem. But holy fuck, I almost yeeted my cell phone into space because I fuck. And so I go through the whole thing. Apparently, we're fucked at this point, right? We're just not going to have water for God knows how long, up to two days at minimum. In the back of my mind, I'm like, there's no way this is how this is resolved. This is completely unacceptable. But I know if I just call an emergency plumber myself and have them come fix it, there's no way I'm getting that fucking money back. Like, yeah. they're not going to pay me. They're going to be like, oh, you fixed it. Good. Thank you. <laughs> and then never call me again. Yeah. And so at this point, I just calm down and I start talking to the dudes. They're almost done putting the fridge in. And the guy is like, well, there should be a way to turn off the, you know, irrigation system, right? Should have a separate water supply. And I'm like, okay, where would that be? And he's like, I don't know, man. It's your house. And I'm like, <clears throat> trying to stay calm. This is a new house, man. I don't know. Like, do you have any ideas? And he's like, no, nah, I, I don't know, man. It's all different. It's every house is different, but there should be one. Like you just got to turn that off and you'll be fine. I'm like, okay, are you going to help me turn that off? And he's like, well, we're almost done with the fridge and then we'll be out of your hair. Like, no. Mm -hmm. So you're going to leave me with no water and a theory about a valve that will fix my problems in the short term. And this dude was not fucking out. They're doing the fridge and he's like, well, there's definitely a way to do what I'm talking about. Just, you just have to find that. Oh, I'm livid at this point. You can tell because I'm still livid. I wander around. Eventually, I find a magical nozzle under a different spigot in an area I would never have guessed that turns off the water flow to the irrigation system. And we can have water in the house. Problem solved. Right as these guys are almost done with the fridge, I find this and I come in and I'm like, hey, I think I found the thing. Like, is the fridge hooked up? Can I turn the water onto the house? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all good. He looked me right in my fucking eyes and was like, See, I told you there'd be a thing. <laughs> this fucking guy who just ruined <laughs> my entire morning, damaged my house, damaged an irrigation system that's probably so fucking old it doesn't even, they don't even make replacement parts or some, there's gonna be some dumb shit from this where it's like, oh, we can't fix it. Oh no, well, it's good. We can fix it in like two months or something. There's gonna be some fucking fallout from this. These fucking guys, and he looks me in my stupid bright red face and is like see i told you so in that tone i my fists clenched at my sides i have never been in a fight i am not a confrontational person i am generally polite and cordial with everyone no matter how much of a dick they are to me he said that i didn't say shit he said that to me i clenched my fists and my jaw and just went and just walked out to the garage and turned the water on. <laughs> As I'm coming back inside, these dudes are gone. They are gone. I come into the house, I look out the back, and the thing is not gushing. And I turn on a sink real quick, and it's working. And I'm like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. It's fine. So we have water. The thing is, the irrigation is still broken, but I like it's isolated, so it'll be fine. We'll, we'll just get it fixed. It'll be fine. And as I'm standing at the sink in the kitchen, I'm looking out the front, and the dudes are like frantically like tossing their shit in the back of the truck, like tossing the tools, tossing the garbage that they had, the whatever, mm -hmm. the clothes at the back. And I'm like, they can't be leaving. Don't I have to sign something that saying that I accepted this expensive appliance? They're just gonna leave it. They just fucking need everything in the truck and get in that motherfucker and speed off. Not another word. They knew what the fuck they did. They were fucking gone, dude. Yeah. I don't know if it was my expression and my fist clenching or if they were just planning to do this the whole time. And now, so right before we started this, Manny texted me from the other room and is like, hey, water's not coming out of the fridge. Is it supposed to be getting cold? The fridge isn't cold and it doesn't seem to be working. And I just went out there and looked at it, and it's not, it's not, it's not cold. It's been plugged in for like an hour. It's not getting cold. There's no water coming out. 
I'm hoping there's like a first time setup or some shit that you have to go through and push a certain thing of buttons or something. Mm. But like, if they set it up incorrectly, <laughs> if they, they just stopped what they were doing and were like, fuck, leave, leave, fucking leave, get out of here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I lose my fucking mind. <laughs> I'm just going to start punching things oh or something God. because I never, I, I, I have rarely oh felt this angry in my entire life at anything. If they ran because they <sighs> knew it was broken and they were afraid. Oh my God. <laughs> like all the water had somehow short circuited something in the pump or something like that. Oh my God. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. Do you still not know if your fridge works? No. It, then, when I came back to record this, it was still 80 Jesus degrees Christ. inside the fridge and the freezer, and no water was coming out, and there was no sign of any reason why that would be happening. Yeah, everyone listening at home, please understand, this actually happened an hour ago. <laughs> this is literally... literally <laughs> this all started at 9.30-ish a.m., and it's like 1... It's just after 1 p.m. right now. Yeah. Oh, my <sighs> God. I There's nothing I love more. And I know it's not pleasant for you, Bob, but there's nothing I love more than indignant rage, Bob. It's so it, It's happened like same. three times. Yeah, it know. takes so much to it get takes, me here. It's so oh rare, but God, God it's oh. beautiful. <sighs> well, the first I... dudes broke something else, right? The gas oh, line yeah. wasn't working? Yeah, so the first delivery, the fridge got dented. They claimed it wasn't them. Yeah. I had no evidence they did it, but it was dented, and they were trying to get me to accept it anyway, and they screwed up the gas line, which was an easy fix. It was The problem was more than I didn't know that the earthquake shutoff thing even existed. Once I learned what that was, it took me like five minutes to fix it. So right now in my backyard, there's a piece of pipe with a relay on top of it laying in the backyard. There's a dirt all over everything on the patio, including my grill, which was like two feet away from this incident. Like, it's just a very first world problem. It'll clean off. I understand that. But like, my whole backyard's a fucking explosion <laughs> mess right now. And I just the fucking gall on that dude. Like, every step of the way was that exact same tone of like, See, I told you. Let me check it. <laughs> hey, let me measure it. Ugh. It sounds like the Needs More Mud guy <laughs> all over again, dude. <laughs> I feel that. Like, I feel that guy. He's the Californian version of, ah, it just needs more mud. It'll get more mud. <laughs> See, man, told you more mud would fix it. For those of you who don't know what this reference is, watch the Drown Man series on YouTube.com slash Markiplier. Yeah. I also humbly surrender for this episode because there's literally nothing I could say that would ever compete with that story. Well, now listen, I'm the judge, and so I feel like I need to assign some points here. Yeah, okay, all right. Bob, for getting so royally fucked in all this mess, I award you 69 points. Thank you. Mark, for yielding your time and not even trying to compete, I'm actually going to give you 20,000 points. What the fuck? Yeah, but for today only, or at least for my hosting standards, we're going to go by golfing rules, so lesser points uh, win, so Bob's still the winner. All right, that's fair. All right, you got I, I clenched my fists. I just wanted you to know. I'm not, this is all kind of a bit, but it's also kind of not a bit. This is the kind of rage that lasts. I was too afraid to actually not let you win, Bob, but I had to at least build the suspense. I don't know when we're going to be in the same room again, but I don't know if it's far enough in the future, Wade, for you to fuck around with this. Okay, I don't even know. I just want you to think about that. You win, Bob, by a lot. You're so far under par, Bob. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe that they ran away because, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Bob is six foot four. He's not a small guy, very intimidating in the right circumstances. So uh, I imagine they were very fearful, just like I would be in that situation. See, man, told you it all work out fine. <laughs> I mean, there's a refrigerator in my kitchen, so it's close, right? Worst case, you go buy some ice, you toss it in there, and the ice will keep things cold in your ice box. Yeah, just yeah, go yeah. buy some ice at the store, put that in the ice maker, and that'll keep everything else cold. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> Oh man, I've hurt. This hurts. Oh, All by the way, it hurts. Off topic, but I just looked at the bot. My feet are covered in blood. What? Uh, it's fake blood. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. It's fine. You can't just you gotta lead off with that part. Last, a little bit. Night, last night we were filming, so it was just a lot of blood. So I looked down at my feet. I'm like, am I okay? And it's just like, oh yeah, wait, no, I was walking in blood yesterday and I didn't shower. So I'm good. Mm. I'm okay. <laughs> I hope that the editor just takes that down to, yeah, I was walking around in blood yesterday. I didn't shower, but everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, All right, Judge fuck. Man. Wrap it up. All right. That's it. Thank you again to our sponsors for this episode. Appreciate all of you guys. Or I appreciate you, <laughs> one guy. I appreciate the two of you. <laughs> what do you say? What happened? Are you, read the script, man. Read the script. Oh, uh, <clears throat> thank you to our sponsors <laughs> for Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Distractable. Brought to you by Wood Elf. Make sure you're subscribed so you always know when there's a new episode. Follow Wood Elf Media for latest updates. Follow us. You can find Bob. Uh, Bob. Facebook. Fa face, Bob, you say. Facebook. I stream off Facebook. <laughs> Mormon. Facebook.com slash MySkirm. Mark, you can find YouTube.com slash Markiplier. Game. I'm Lord Minion 777. We'll see you guys in whatever the hell happens next week. Congrats on the win, Bob. Yeah, congrats. Podcast out! <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to throw it. Let's go. And they <laughs> threw it out the back of the truck, and I found it in the street in the packaging. So yeah. I'm not I'm not mad about it anymore, but that was a hilarious. Like, that happened, and I actually started laughing. I went from unbridled rage to, like, this yeah. is a cartoon, and those guys are incompetent morons. How did this happen? I imagine they were in such a hurry that one of them jumped in the driver's seat, like was trying to turn the engine to get the vehicle rolling, and the other one hopped in the back and was like, I'm not even going to get in this chair, and like is trying to slam the big door closed that they pulled the fridge out of, sees the box, just kicks it out, and like slams the door as they take off, screeching and leaving like tread marks on the street. Yeah, I was going to say that you think they were looking out the window and they saw Bob walking like the Terminator <laughs> towards them, and they're like, hey, 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 hey. oh god! <laughs> Throw the cable! Go, Jim! Hit it, Jim! Get out of here! And they fucking do a donut. This is like a rule of the universe. They look, and I swing open the door, and I'm standing like a statue, and they just hear, John, 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 John. And they're like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> God damn it. Run, it's the Terminator. <laughs> or I reckon Jason emerging from the puddle of water like you were in there, and you step out like dripping water. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't imagine, but like... I must have scared the shit out of those guys. I didn't threaten them or anything. I'm just very large, and I was about as angry as I've been in my entire life. Yeah. It's kind of impressive, honestly. Thank you, incompetent refrigerator delivery men, for giving me such a funny story to tell. A great episode of Distractable that everyone seemed to enjoy. They seemed to like it, so that's good. It was universal. I had people texting me being like, that episode was amazing. If you were listening to this and you haven't listened to Bob's Fridge episode yet, if you're just finding Distractable, stop listening to this one unless it's funnier and go listen to Bob's Fridge for context. 1,000%. Yes. But alas, we have to move on from the fridge, and uh, hopefully we have a good one in store for you guys today. Again, since I won last week, I'll be hosting, and I've decided that we should talk about some of our favorite either personal or friends or even just internet stories of hold my beer moments. And uh, whichever one of you gives me the best hold my beer moments will be declared the winner and can host next week's episode. Yeah, I've already got one for this. Oh, yeah? Oh, good. Yeah, but Bob, if you need some time, we can probably insert an ad read or something right here. Oh. Oh, <gasps> doesn't actually buy me any time. We're already on the other side of the ad <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> right now. You can go first, though. You, you yielding to me? I mean, I can give my title. The title. Yeah, is give your title. Be... Let me. Let me think. Yeah. Let me think. Yeah, the title, uh, Wade, for your consideration is the day I broke my ass. <laughs> you know what? I might have uh, another one that goes with that too myself. Now that you mention it. Yeah, I know that you have some ass adventures. In <laughs> I sure do. But, all right. Well, that's relatable. I like relatable. You get 77 points. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I have a, a small story of me being a really dumb child. Yeah. Oh, man. We could do a whole episode on just dumb child moments. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I need time. I think I need more time. I want to tell a story, but I need to think about it. 14 points for your honesty. That's good. I guess um, by default, Mark, you get to go first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's it's not so much like a, a cohesive story with a proper ending, but we'll see where it goes. It's more like a series of misadventures. And Bob, actually, you might remember this. You weren't there for it, but you might have seen the aftermath of me stumbling, limping back to the dorm room in pain. I do think um, I know what you're going to talk about, yeah. Yeah, because uh, so it's freshman year at college in the University of Cincinnati. And me trying to be a social butterfly, which I was not. I wanted to do like an activity. So I don't remember how I was there might have been a flyer for this or something or maybe there was like a newsletter that was given out or a website that said something. But I don't think that this was a sanctioned activity because what I tried to do was um parkour and it was like supposed to be a quote unquote beginner parkour thing, but there's really no way to do a beginner parkour adventure. And it was just like, I showed up at the place and we met in the parking garage in the University of Cincinnati and it was me and three other dudes and one of them had done parkour, maybe. And the other three of us were just like complete newbies getting in there and just trying to have an adventure. So really looking back on it, this might have been the stupidest thing I've ever done in my entire life. But I exuded confidence while I was there. I was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing. Parkour, you jump around on stuff and you try to do sick leaps off of things and you do tucks and rolls, right? It's exactly like the episode of The Office where they're like jumping on things and going, parkour. <laughs> 
the ripe year of 2007. Um, so we jump around the parking garage, and I don't know why I was okay with this. We were jumping around the fourth level of the parking garage. It wasn't the one by our dorm, like right next to us. It was the one on the other side of campus by the engineering building that had like six floors by that big concrete tower. Mm -hmm. And so we were leaping around there. We were jumping around. We would go like over the edge with like 50 feet below us. And we would just like dance around there for a little bit and like shimmy our way across. And so we actually end up like dropping down two floors any way but the stairs or the ramp inside. So like God. crawling around the building outside. And I don't die at this point. But we get down to the second level, and it's time to drop from the second story and do a sweet tuck and roll into this little grass patch. And so the first guy goes, and he goes, like, drop and tuck and roll, and it's perfect, and he's fine. And then the second guy goes, and he manages to do it, a tuck and roll. And it's at this point that I realized they assumed I knew how to do a tuck and roll, oh, which I had never done in my life. So there I am hanging off by one hand from the second story ledge of a concrete parking garage looking at a tiny patch of grass that I'm supposed to hit and in my head I'm like it can't be that hard <laughs> and so they're all giving me encouraging words they're like you can do it I'm like you got this and I'm like I got this I got this and so I drop and when my legs hit the ground, thankfully they bent the correct way, but I didn't go forward at all. I landed from the second story straight onto my ass, like 100% full on into my ass. And like the way the guys looked at me, it looked like they saw me die because I felt something pop. I felt it like weirdly no pain. But like this stunned thing where you're like on the ground, like, uh, am I dead? Uh, am I dead? And um, I, I get up from that and they're just like, what the fuck? Are you OK? And like, weirdly enough, I, I seemed totally fine. I wasn't, by the way, I want to mention I was not OK, but I shook it off because I was like, I'm, I'm tough. I'm tough. I'm, I'm totally fine. So I decided to take this, <laughs> this, uh, this um, parkour adventure to the next level. And go like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine. Uh, and then the guy behind me is about to go. And uh, he drops. And instead of falling on his ass, he fell on his face. Oh, no. Like, his legs hit. He went forward. He did not roll. Ugh. Like, 100% <laughs> no roll right into his face and chest hit the ground. Jesus. And you just hear him go, <gasps> like, <gasps> oh, God, like just no. all the wind dropped out of him and he's desperately like on the ground trying to get a sucking breath and i kind of realized at this point we don't know what we're doing but i was in too deep <laughs> uh so, so you know after a while we're just standing there we're looking at this guy dying on the ground and we're like oh, what do we do what do we do <laughs> it's like the bride regan joke of the kids <laughs> one falls and you're just like ah. Oh, God, get some leaves. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, but put those on. Oh, oh is yeah. that helping? Yeah, 100%. It's, it's exactly like that. But he gets up. like he's, he's He gets up and he plays it off like, oh, I'm fine. But clearly his ribs are broken. Like oh, straight man. up, his ribs are broken. God. And so he gets up. He's like, I, th I, think, I, I think I need uh, I think I'm good for today, guys. I, th I think I, I'm going to go lay down. <laughs> it's just like, because that's the fix Jeez. of everything. You just go lay down. You know, this is like college. We don't have health insurance or anything. I think this is pre-Obamacare. Like, we're not covered under our parents' plans at this moment. Like, we don't have the money to take care of a broken bone. So, like, we're just gonna go uh, sleep it off. I'm pretty sure a long <laughs> rest fixes almost anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah it just depends on the length of the rest, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like D&D. &D. You take a long rest, you go back to full health. Yeah, so it's like he stumbles off and we're watching him. We watch him walk away for, like, five minutes because it's just this <laughs> long stretch of path and he's going real slow and and even if he wanted to go to the medical facility it's on the other side of campus oh, no. <laughs> so we're watching him stumble away about the time he disappears out of view behind you know those hills in like the bob you know no one cares there's there's these like grassy hills Since that is a very hilly campus yeah yeah i know and so he disappears around the corner and we're just like we look at each other we're like all right let's keep going guys you know, it's just like <laughs> And so we go over to this building. It's it's DAP for those who don't know. It's like design, architecture, art, and 
planning. Pl planning, that's the one. <laughs> and so uh, it's it's got interesting architecture, which is apparently perfect for uh, parkour. Yeah. And uh, so design, art, architecture, and parkour. And so at this point, my spine has been hurting because at first it didn't hurt, and then it started hurting. And Bob, you know, like, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you, but every time I would go to the gym, after this, and I would do an exercise that worked my spine, I would suddenly, like, hit the ground with crippling pain. Oh. Um, which, afterwards, not even crippling pain, it was like a weird neurological thing where suddenly I got unbelievably nauseous and, like, my hands started, like, shaking and I had to just, like, go to the bathroom and lay on the floor in a stall and just, like, wait until I would be okay. And, you know, at the time, I never connected the dots to me falling on my ass and possibly breaking something in my spine to this weird thing where I'd go to the gym and work my spine and I would be in horrible agony. Anyway. Didn't have time to go there. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder, everyone. Like, we're talking about these things and laughing about these things. Please don't do any of this dumb shit we're about to talk about and have talked about. Oh, yeah, this is why it's a hold my beer moment. It's just like, you don't PSA. do this shit. Don't do it. Don't go to an amateur parkour class with just, like, three buddies and jump around a parking garage. Like, uh, if, you, if your first parkour adventure is dropping from a two-story parking garage, uh, number one, you're me, and number two, you're doing it wrong. I mean, so... Yes, I a hundred percent. That's correct. You need to like learn how to do the simple stuff with before it's from you know death defying heights. Yeah. Was there any part of you that showed up to that and saw that it was pretty informal and so and everyone started doing stuff and you were like, ooh, I don't, I don't know. And then guys started jumping off the second story thing and you did you just look at it and be like, all right, let's go, man? Or was there any part of you that was like, maybe don't. I'll take the stairs. No, nah, man. I wanted to be cool. I, didn't, I wanted friends. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, it's it's literally like that. And it sucks to say it, but just like, nah, man, you don't want to act like a wimp in front of, in front of everyone. That's such a dangerous mindset. That's what leads to all this dumb shit. It is. It is. That's the exact same mindset. And like, there's more dumb shit on the way because we get too dap and we start climbing up and like at this point you know i'm reaching up and trying to pull myself up and you know i'm not, i'm not weak but it was like there was one part where it was pulling up again to a second story thing and i'm like i didn't know if i could pull myself up all the way and they weren't helping because they were already like running ahead of me <laughs> like jumping over shit and i'm like i'm hanging from a, a, a railing and i'm just like oh god oh, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> this is uh and then i managed to get like the crazy adrenaline strength and pull myself up and so we get to the roof we get to the roof of DAP. Somehow we made up. And it's like not a short building. It's not an incredibly tall building. I think it's like three stories up on the roof. It's tall enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, we hear sirens when we're up on the roof. And, you know, Cincinnati, there's plenty of sirens. But for some reason, in our brain, we're like, they're coming for us. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> we went into the forbidden zone. And, like, you know, we're like, they're going to get us on this roof. We've committed horrible crimes. So we all panic, right? So we panic and we run off. And uh, we go back a different way and we drop down a ledge. And then, again, they drop down from this second-story ledge onto this grassy part. And it's like a hurry now. There's no time to, like... <laughs> Debate about it. So I find myself once again hanging by one hand from a second story ledge looking down. But in my mind, in my mind at this moment, I'm like, okay, I went backwards that last time. I'll go forwards this time. I know what my mistake was. <laughs> and so I drop and I'm like, forward, forward, forward. And then roll. I saw them roll on like their shoulder. And so my legs hit the ground. I go forward. And I put 100% of my weight right onto my shoulder, and I don't move. And it's just like, I hit the ground, my shoulder just... Kush! It's like, if you just imagine someone just dropped in the fetal position onto the ground from two stories. It's like, well, thank God you did it the right way that time. Yeah, thank God you rolled forward, <laughs> saved it. You'd think that I would have, like, after the first fall, like, okay, guys, can you show me how to do this roll thing? Because it's clear that I don't know. No, that's not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> you gotta be cool. And I can't believe they didn't say, like, do you want, like, to practice or anything? Do you want us to, like, teach you? It's like, no, I must have made a mistake. I'm a parkour expert, and that was just a flub. I hope they lost their parkour teaching license after this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I so like like I I hit the ground and I'm just like I like am down there for a while. I'm uh, for a while and I'm like uh, 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 okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I look up and they're gone. <laughs> Well, they taught you, didn't they? <laughs> they freaking destroyed my body and then bail. <laughs> I think the only way that could be better at all is if you look up and there's like two cops just standing there. Just like, we know where you were. That's the forbidden roof. This just the goes to show you guys, you do dumb shit, you get friends for life. Play dumb games, get dumb prizes, right? Yeah, man. And I, I just remember I the long walk, because, Bob, you know Dap is literally on the other side. No, from- that's like a 20-minute walk away from our dorm, at least. Yeah, and especially when I, like, my shoulder is, like, <laughs> and my shoulder was fucked up for years after that. Yeah, well, that's the main thing I remember. When you said you broke your ass, I didn't even remember that. I remember your shoulder was absolutely destroyed. Yes, Ab- and and I didn't go to a doctor or oh, anything. God, no, I just lived no. with not being able to lift my arm above my neckline on my left side. God, if you'd gotten help and you weren't in miserable pain the rest of your life, what a loser you would have been. Which I, I don't remember. So we lived in a dorm room together freshman year of college. Was that before or after your bed was lofted? So you um, had to climb into bed every night. This was way before. This is okay. like way before. God, do we, I could tell that. It's just oh, like that, that was such. A, I can't believe we survived that. That's we have to tell that story now. The lofting the bed story because it's so fucked. Oh my god! I'll kick it off and then you take it over. Like so, it's back from winter break, right? So we each went our separate ways, and I think we became good friends in the first uh, quarter. At that point, we were gaming a lot, playing like a dark yeah. hero. Like we were friends and at like, that point. What year was this? Like freshman year, two thousand and seven. Freshman year, yeah, yeah, college. Yeah. So this would have been january 2008 when this this next story and the parkouring also happened at the same time right oh yeah no parkour was in the fall right when i got there i was like i'm gonna get out there and i'm gonna try things and then i learned my lesson to never go outside <laughs> never tried anything again <laughs> i Fuck really that. didn't i didn't try anything we're going from like september fast forward straight to january got it <laughs> yeah yeah uh so i come in from winter break i i open the door and you know bob's there and i'm just like <sighs> Let's loft the beds. <laughs> like, I don't think I said hello first. I think I, like, walked in the door and was like, you want to loft? The, you want to put the beds in on, on top? Bunk them? You want to bunk the beds? And it's just like... Well, we'd have so much more room for activities that way. I know. God, that movie hadn't even come out. I know. <laughs> That's exactly what we were doing. We wanted room for activities. We did. That's exactly what we wanted. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like we need more space for when people come over yeah. when we have all these parties obviously <laughs> we're cool guys you guys throw a lot of parties after this yeah oh, sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. God, we definitely threw at least so one <laughs> we, threw, we did throw one <laughs> god <laughs> Great. I can't All wait right. to hear how worth it this was. Oh, yeah. But I'll take over. So Mark enters. And so our current setup, the way we had it set up, because we didn't know each other going in, we basically split the room in half, right? The way a lot of dorm rooms do it when you're with a stranger. Yeah. One half was mine. One half was Mark. So on each half, there's like a bed. Underneath the bed, you can fit. There's a dresser and you use some storage. And then you have a desk and you have like a wardrobe. Yeah. So there's the middle of the room, but it's not that big of a room. Like, if we were standing shoulder to shoulder, we'd probably take up the whole width of the center of that room. Yeah. So, if you bunk one bed on top of the other, you get, like, you know, a quarter of the room. You get the whole corner for whatever you want. Yeah. Put both the dressers under the same bed, store stuff in your wardrobe, easy peasy. But the way the beds are supposed to go together when you bunk them, you're supposed to, one lower the height of the bed that goes on top because when they're on the floor the bed is like all the way up on the highest setting it can go right so you can put stuff under it okay but if you leave it like that and then put it on top of another bed there's like maybe a foot between the bed (laughs) and the ceiling yeah Yeah, really like legitimately (laughs) so you're supposed to change that but that required like tools or i don't know knowledge we didn't know how to do that so we didn't do that of course not so we just took mark's bed and we're just like put it the fuck up there 
The Ooh. other thing about bunking, there was a whole system. The other thing about this is, other than the fact that you're supposed to, one, ask for permission, and two, ask for help from adults, you're supposed to have these metal pins. Yeah. So you stack one on top of the other, right? And they're, they're not like <laughs> large legs. There's supposed to be a thick metal pin in each of the four legs. They stick into the bottom of the top head that lock it in place. So yeah. they, they can't slip off. That seems crucially important, <laughs> sure right? Sure does. It's very important. So we're looking at this, and we're like, yeah, I don't think we need... I don't, we can't adjust your bed. I think... And Mark is like, that's fine. That's fine. I'll sleep up high. Good air up high. It'll be fine. <laughs> Good air. Like, we get past that hurdle, and then we're looking, and we're like, all right, metal pins. Metal pins. We don't have metal pins. I don't want to go talk... If we ask an RA... If we can do this, they'll probably be like, no, don't do that. Until you have to fill out a form or something. We don't want to do that shit. So what can we use in place of metal pins? And I don't know. I think it was you, Mark. I got yeah, to give credit me. words, too. <laughs> We're sitting there like brainstorming. And Mark like goes into his wardrobe where his clothes hang up and stuff and turns back to me with a pair of scissors <laughs> and a plastic clothes hanger. <laughs> And is like, if we just snip this straight part of this clothes hanger, it's like metal pins. It was the perfect size. It fit perfectly. It was the right diameter. It has, I'm pretty sure, plastic clothes hangers you can snap no. with your bare hands have the same tensile and sheer strength as metal pins. No. So, like, yeah, he looks at me, and of course, he holds up the scissors and then the thing, and I look at him, and I'm like, perfect. <laughs> How big do you think they need to be? Let's do this. No hesitation at all. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, oh. And my favorite part of this whole thing, we trim them to the length we think they need to be. We set them. They're not exactly the same length. We're not measurers, okay? We're doers. Yeah, no. Why would you bother making sure they were even? And uh, we eyeball them to the same-ish length, set them all in. We hoist the bed up really precariously, uh -huh. set it on the pins. One of the four pins was like half an inch longer than the other ones. <laughs> and it was half an inch too long. Yep. <laughs> so the bed, the weight of that corner of Mark's bunked bed, which is now like 10 feet off the ground, is not supported on the leg of the bed sitting on the top of the bottom bed. The weight of that bed is sitting on the plastic clothes hanger, and there's like a gap between the foot of the bed and what it's supposed to be sitting on. And we look at that, and it's like, ah, shit, it's too long, huh? Well, I suppose we could take it back down and trim that plastic so everything sits. And we sort of like, I don't remember the conversation, but we looked at it for maybe a second, like 10 <laughs> seconds total. And then Mark was just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> of course. <yeah. laughs> and just climbed up. And so for the entire rest of that school year, yeah. Mark's bunk bed, one quarter of the legs was supported by like a, a quarter inch thick piece of plastic. You should be fucking dead. <laughs> I when know. nothing happened, nothing bad happened. Totally fine. Really? Well, something did happen. I, like, okay, well, so you got oh, okay. You got to well. understand that, like, when I climbed in here, I didn't want to tell Bob that I didn't have a lot of room. You don't admit defeat. But let me just say, if I sneezed while I was laying in bed, I would have broken my nose. Like, I would <laughs> go forward a couple inches and I smack into the ceiling. <laughs> but I get up there. I'm like, oh, it's cozy. Like, this is why, like, I like the, the tour bunks, just, like, because it was like a coffin. So, in an odd way, I did like it. But then I remember, like, a few days after we did this, one morning, my alarm goes off or whatever. It's, like, early. And I'm like, okay, I got to get out of bed. And I had forgotten that I was in a bunk. And so, I, like, in a daze, it's dark. I, like, climb out of bed. And just suddenly, I'm falling. <laughs> And Bob, you gotta tell, like, what did this, what did you think? Like, I know you were asleep, you woke it up, but I was like, I fall, and I don't remember what happened, and then I was on the ground. <laughs> I mean, so I was really asleep. I'm not a morning person. I wake up super slowly. So I was laying in bed, mostly asleep, and it was like, if you imagine what it would look like in a cartoon, yeah. If you're you're in an office building in a window office and somebody has leaped out of a window above yours and yeah. they come flying by your window like they're parachuting or something. <laughs> like I'm just laying in bed and I just see Mark just like, ooh, whoa. <laughs> and then Mark's just on the floor and I don't even know if I rolled over. Like I saw that <laughs> and then I heard you keep moving and I was just like, oh, he's fine. I think you bubbled like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, yeah, okay. After I go, <laughs> 
<laughs> you okay? But you you really <sighs> like rolled out like you were just gonna put your foot on the floor. So the way you fell was just like ooh, tumbling. <laughs> like whoa, whoa, fuck. Yeah, God. Uh, but that was the only time I made that mistake. So um, it was good. Yeah. After that, like I remember laying in the bed and I could hear everything in the like dorm above me. And it was like I heard people jumping around, like partying. I heard people have sex, and I'm just like. Worth it. We have so much room for activity. <laughs> Somebody who was in one of the few dorms, like, right above us, yeah. had so much sex freshman year. I know. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, not to be super crass, and I have no idea who they were, but they fucked. I know. I know. <laughs> God damn. Mark was, yeah. like, nose deep in their fucking sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like, maybe that's why he liked it. Mark is like six inches away. He's like, can you smell stuff through through cinder block walls? I was like, hey, good job, buddy. You got this. Give him a pat hey, way to go, pal. <laughs> You're laying there trying to sleep. Finally, like the squeaking stops and the guy is like, oh, yeah, nice. Good night, Christy. Good night, Mark. And you're like, good night. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. I reach up, give him a shoulder rub after he's <laughs> way to go, pal. <laughs> Good night. Mm. On a first name basis because your nose is so deep in their shit. Okay, well, that story, which was a, just a spinoff of your story, is possibly yeah. better than the one I have. But I do oh, have... God damn. I've got my very own personal hold my beer moment i guess go for it i want to hear it i don't know did you have any more did you want to hit anything else no no that's it for now i mean our whole <sighs> yeah, freshman yeah. year could just be nothing but these kinds of things but yeah. <laughs> this so many fucking moments. be better than them everyone just so so fucking stupid we're so stupid <laughs> we are <laughs> so no so stupid. i do i did want to say i do remember so i remember the parkour thing and i remember mostly what i remember is when you came back then you were really like hurt at that point and so yeah. uh, you kind of just like laid down and tried to relax we did our separate things but i remember thinking to myself like this fucking dude has his mirror's edge outfit on to go parkouring <laughs> did you get a special outfit for that or did you just have clothes because i swear to god i had got gloves i got gloves. you had fingerless gloves yeah yeah fingerless you had like gloves. one of those asymmetrical like zip hoodies and you had like a cross shoulder bag or oh, something god, like, you came back and i was like oh this is fucking oh, embarrassing man. look I, these are details i didn't want you looked like you were going to do parkour but i i remember just thinking like man fuck this dude loves parkour he's got the whole outfit and everything <laughs> god god damn <laughs> oh god i just wanted to look like i fit the part you know <laughs> Walking, like I don't know what I'm doing. Like oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Like uh, like I I fucking went out and got a parkour cosplay outfit so that people would believe. That I know. And then you just <laughs> fell on your ass, fell on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh That's god. Commitment, man. No, those are details I wish not to have uh, been revealed. But it's okay. It's cool. I love the visual of you starting to roll both times and then just getting fucking planted and not being able to roll oh. at all. Yeah, that's it's so funny. Yeah, it's uh, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> It is That's funny now because you're okay, dude. I, I have no idea right? if I'm gonna have like long term spinal issues from that. Like, who fucking knows? I'm probably okay at this point. I haven't had any pain. Did you ever see the guy that like took five minutes to walk away again? N no, oh, he definitely died. <laughs> He died. He he died in his sleep in his dorm room. One hundred percent. I didn't even think about it. I was so focused on me. I didn't even. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, probably the rest of those guys never saw you again either. They're out there right now, like, having a beer, like, really shakily, like, you remember those two guys that died in college? <laughs> we should have never fucking gotten into parkour, man. God damn it. Those are the sixth and seventh guys we killed trying to teach people parkour. We always go to the second story too early. Fuck. God. Oh, my God. This is Markiplier here joined with my good friend Tyler, who has a master's degree in sports administration. I did, in fact, study sports. Our podcast is a great place for you to learn about sports. Or not learn about sports, and more learn about how Tyler tortures me. Yeah, there's comedy. It's funny. Anyway, back to your normally scheduled programming. Sorry for interrupting. By the way, the podcast is called Go My Favorite Sports Team. Right, we didn't say the name <laughs> of it. Go My Favorite Sports Team. I forgot about that part. All right, goodbye now. From notorious scandals to unforgettable wins, 
Tune in to the audiobook memoirs of your favorite celebrities and thought leaders with life-changing lessons and stories straight from their voices. Tap the banner to explore the starstruck celebrity title shelf now. Okay, my story. All right. The title of my story is The Longest, the longest Coldest, coldest shittiest, shittiest Night. <laughs> okay, The Longest, All Coldest, right. Shittiest Night. Yes. So, something people may not know about me, when I was in college, I was a bit of a doer myself, not mm -hmm. parkour, but uh, I thought it'd be really cool at some point. I found this motorcycle on Craigslist for real cheap. Didn't question why it was real cheap, just real cheap. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's cool. I like stuff that has motors. I like cars and go-karts. So probably a motorcycle fits right in with that. So I bought a motorcycle on Craigslist for cash. You remember how much it was? It's like 700 bucks Okay. for a fully functioning. It was a Honda CX 500. It's actually a really great motorcycle. 1978 Honda CX 500. Very interesting motorcycle. Interesting engine, interesting drivetrain. The way I learned to ride was the guy who I was buying it from was some random middle-aged dude in Kentucky. I messaged him and I was like, I got the cash. I can buy it. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. Do you, uh, you want to come pick it up and ride it home? And my second message to him was like, Oh, you know, I've never actually ridden a motorcycle. I probably shouldn't ride it on the highway. And this adult who, let me say, maybe should have thought better of this, didn't say like, oh, I don't know if I can sell it to you, young young man who's never done this before. He was like, oh, it's no problem. I can teach you. <laughs> Which, sure. Yeah. So I meet him in a church parking lot, and he teaches me how to ride. Luckily, I, my car was a manual transmission, so I understood how a clutch worked, because motorcycles, by and large, are manual transmissions. I learned pretty quick. I'm honestly, I'm good at like driving and riding stuff. I'm good at go-karts. I like cars. It was easy, but I met him for 45 minutes in a church parking lot and then handed him 700 bucks cash. It was like nighttime, which I hadn't considered. I had a friend drop me off. I met him and then I rode from Newport, Kentucky back to where I lived right by the University of Cincinnati, which is like, you know, a half hour ride through complex downtown highways through the heart of Cincinnati where you have to go through some complicated interchanges and all this stuff, I actually got home no problem. Literally, by sheer luck and dumb idiocy, I got home. So I, now I had a motorcycle. And I, I went and I got my license. and I Well, I got my temporary license so I could learn. And I registered it and all this stuff. I did the whole thing. And I got body armor and I got a helmet. I didn't have those things. I had a helmet, but I didn't have good ones when I rode it home. And I was like, all right, I'm a motorcycle guy now. I rode this thing to school because you could park on campus motorcycles for yeah. free. I rode this thing to work because it's cool. I rode this thing everywhere. And then I was in a band at the time because I was a cool guy. And uh, we got a gig at Ohio University, which is in Athens, Ohio, which is not close to Cincinnati. It's a hike. Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a hike. And I didn't know that. And I was like, the drummer has to drive his big station wagon. I'll have him take my instrument and I'll just ride my motorcycle to this gig, right? I'll park right out front of the bar we're playing at and it'll be super cool. And uh, I didn't think about the fact that this gig was in spring, early spring. It's not that warm in Ohio in early spring. And uh, I didn't think about the fact that I was going to be traveling after I had a class I had to do and then I was going to leave in the afternoon. So I was traveling afternoon to evening. It gets down to like, I don't know. 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees at the lowest, depending on the time of year. I don't remember exactly. And I thought to myself, I know how to get to Ohio University. You just hop on 32 East, right? You take whatever, 275, whatever you want, get to 32 East. And it's like an hour away, right? Mm -hmm. And you just go to Ohio University. This was sort of in the days before you just pull your phone out and it tells you. This was maybe in like 2008, 2009, maybe. So I didn't check. I have it in front of me. If you take the Google Maps route from University of Cincinnati to Ohio University, it's approximately two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah, it's like a two and a, two and a half to three hour drive. Yeah. And I have all my motorcycle gear at this point. I have a nice jacket with Kevlar armor in it in case I fall. I have a good highly rated helmet. I spent more on my safety gear than I spent on my motorcycle. I was being responsible. And I left for Athens at like maybe three in the afternoon. Not super cold. In the 60s maybe. The thing I didn't understand until the moment I got on the highway 
and the next two and a half hours of riding <laughs> is that if it's like 60 degrees outside ambient you know just that's the temperature if you're going 70 miles an hour on a motorcycle that wind feels like 40 degrees yeah and if it's like 40 degrees <laughs> and if the sun is going down because you're an idiot and you're in the middle of nowhere because ohio is an abyss with five cities in it yeah <laughs> it's you know 40 degrees outside feels like 20 degrees or lower on your poor hands that have literally no protection on them except mesh gloves. Yeah. So I leave and like on my way out of Cincinnati, the first maybe 40 minutes is like, ooh, chilly. But that's cool. Like, it's cool. I'm on the motorcycle. It's cool. And the sun starts going lower and lower. The temperature starts edging down and reaches a point at like an hour or an hour and a half in. It reached a point where I was like, okay, this is cold. Like, fuck. Like, do I turn back? And like, well, but I have the gig. I have to be there. We play a gig at like 9 p.m. or something, right? So I have to be there. I have to get dinner. Like, I can't turn back. Can't stop. Committed at this point. Gotta be there for the boys. Gotta show up. Gotta get paid for this gig. Gotta have some beers with the boys. <laughs> and it gets, so like an hour and a half in, like really cold. Like imagine it's windy, it's 70 mile an hour winds, and it's freezing out. And my hands are just going numb, which is not great on a motorcycle. You really need to be able to move all of your fingers <laughs> to do all the parts of a motorcycle. I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, if your hands don't work, you can't work the levers. You can't do anything. You kind of just kind of freeze in place. <laughs> yeah. My feet start to go numb, which is the only other thing you have to work the controls. You need to, you need both hands, both feet to do all the parts of a motorcycle to shift and act and work the brakes yeah. and to not fall over. Yeah. When you stop, I start to get so cold and so miserable. My head is down trying to keep the air from blowing up into my helmet because it's a closed helmet, but it doesn't have a closed neck. And it's like blowing down my shirt, it's blowing up my sleeves. I'm <laughs> dying, I'm shivering and I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like not thinking about anything other than like wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, don't freeze to death. And then suddenly in the middle of nowhere, darkness, it's literally just me with my 30 or 40 year old motorcycle. And it just goes, <laughs> <laughs> it dies. I'm 70 miles an hour, engine cuts out, Jesus. not a soul in sight. It's basically dark at this point. I pull off to the side of the road, kick the stand down and I'm standing next to it like, <sighs> shit like what do i even do like i haven't seen a gas station in like half an hour i guess i walk forward and see what happens <laughs> it strikes me at this point because i'm an idiot motorcycles generally have a main fuel tank and then like an auxiliary tank that's like an extra gallon or half gallon or something mm -hmm. so when you run out of your main tank you switch to your auxiliary tank and that's your signal like get some gas that's the like e li empty light turning on right mm, yeah but i didn't know that i stood there for like half an hour it's getting later and colder i'm shivering i call a buddy i call my dad and he's like i've never i haven't had a motorcycle you fucking idiot why would i <laughs> don't have a motorcycle that's my <laughs> that's my solution finally it strikes me like oh you know what in my 40 minute motorcycle lesson he showed me as a little switch petcock to turn it to the auxiliary tank i wonder yeah and i turn that and it starts back up now it's like totally dark out but at least i'm moving yeah and continuing to freeze the next hour of the trip I pulled off at every gas station just to go inside <laughs> and buy something hot and buy another pair of gloves or a shirt <laughs> or whatever the fuck they had. It's gas stations in the middle of nowhere, right? But like I get to the first one, they have like work gloves and I'm like, yeah, stretch that shit on over my motorcycle gloves. And they have like dumb, stupid NASCAR t-shirts or something. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, biggest one you got, put it on. I'm like layering. I put on all the clothes I had on my backpack because I packed for like two nights. The idea is I'm going to this gig and I'm going to drive up to Columbus to see my parents and show them my cool motorcycle. Yeah. They'll love that. <laughs> and then I'll drive back to school and um, I put on all my clothes, two pairs of pants, all the socks, everything I've got. I head back out after the first gas station. No effect whatsoever. In fact, it's way worse because I was just inside for like 20 minutes yeah. and it's kind of warm. And, you know, you're, you get tingly, your fingers tingle, your skin is like itchy. Yeah. I get back on the bike. Now I'm itchy and fucking cold <laughs> as hell like just miserable every gas station i see i stop just to go have a cup of coffee i hold a cup of coffee in my hands and then i throw it away because i don't even drink coffee because i'm a college kid <laughs> i'd lost feeling like all the way up my arms and legs uh -huh. finally one of the last stops i make again thinking this would be like an hour-long bike ride i'm like two hours in stopping every time so what should be two hours and 40 minutes of drive time took me four hours total to complete with all the stops the last or second to last stop I make, I don't remember for sure. 
I'm so numb. I get off the, the state route. I park up, I go inside. I'm like warming up my hands. My phone is dying because at this point in human history, phone batteries didn't last that long because it was when smartphones were a thing, but they sucked. Yeah. So my phone is like dying. Like if I crash, that's it. I'm dead. That's how I die. <laughs> and uh, I'm super numb. Being inside doesn't even help. On my way out, I get on my bike. I can't feel my arms and legs still. And I'm by myself at this point, and I'm just going to pull back onto the highway and just try and get to Athens. Just go for it. And I can't feel my feet. And I laid my own motorcycle down on my own leg. Oh, no. Because I couldn't feel my arms and legs. I literally pulled up to turn onto the street and just put my feet out and was like, all right, I'll just look for traffic. And suddenly I'm just falling over. Yeah. And I have no control. I think I hurt my leg, but I couldn't feel it. I laid the bike down onto my leg, scratched the shit out of my bike, scratched my fancy new helmet. Everything hurts. Everything's numb. Fuck. I eventually got there, drank so much beer because everything hurt and was cold forever. Yeah. Played a gig. I don't remember the gig. I only remember the cold. But that had to be the coldest, longest most miserable four hours of my entire life. <laughs> and like, I can't believe I survived. There were literally moments where it was me in the middle of woods, pitch black on a highway, on a motorcycle, feeling like I was about to freeze to death and fall over. Damn. Motorcycles are cool, right? How many yeah, more trips did you make on that motorcycle? I actually used it for a while after that, but I never again did I do a road trip on it. Mm -hmm. I rode it around campus and I zipped from work to school and whatever. How was the trip back? Well, so the rest of it was during the day. Okay. The The plan was I had the gig that night. The next morning I woke up. My buddy actually drove down from Columbus to see the gig and hang out. And he drove in a car. So I sort of followed him on the highway as like a little bit of a windbreak. And it was in the daytime sun. It was cold. Like it was still only maybe 60 degrees out. So it's chilly, but it's totally bearable. Yeah. And I had my buddy with me in his car if anything happened. We got to Columbus, no problem. The trip home, it was actually kind of annoying because there was a lot of traffic because of construction, which is just really boring on a motorcycle because there's no like radio and you can't relax. You're just sitting on a motorcycle that's sort of overheating on the highway. Anyway, it's fine yeah. compared to the trip, the first leg of the trip, joyous, pleasurable even. <laughs> but that fucking night on Highway 32, trying to get to goddamn Ohio University, I've never gone back and I never will. Fuck you, Athens. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson learned is screw Athens, Ohio. I blame them completely for being so far away from Cincinnati. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, so you took 32. That's like the longest possible route according to this. No, there's not a, what do you mean? There's not a shorter route. What's the shorter route? Yeah, what's the shorter route? So looking at this, the shorter route's to take 71 north and then take 35 and 50 east. Uh -huh. That's not shorter. Time-wise, not mileage-wise. I'm looking at time, not mileage. Hmm. <laughs> This guy, you didn't even know. He didn't even know. No, I mean... Plus, uh, if that's looking from where you live, then maybe, but... No, it's from University of Cincinnati. Ah, uh, nah. Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. I'm just saying, know. man, I'm just saying. Nah, man. Look, well, that's the thing, though. I didn't even check. I knew how to get there back in the days when you just knew, like, oh, I take 71 to get to Columbus, and I take 32 to go to Athens. I didn't even fucking look. I didn't have GPS. I didn't have printed out map quest directions or anything. I just was like, yeah, I know where that is, and went, <laughs> which I can't imagine doing right now as an adult. And I know where things are. Who does that? I would never do that. You do that, Mark, actually, don't you? Yeah, I no, do that. Of course I do that. <laughs> Fucking psychopath. What do you mean? What if you go the wrong way? Well, what if I don't go What if go you think the... of the wrong thing? No, I know the way. What if you drive an hour in the wrong direction? I look at the stars. I guide my way. No, I, like, I, I don't know. I've always <laughs> been good at directions. I can't I can't help it. I just know. You and your car are like, oh, man, I could use this, like, fancy map overlay, but ah, the star, there's the North Star. I know where I'm at. <laughs> Perfect. I know how to get to, I don't know, Westdale, LA. I'll just look at the stars. I don't know. It's like when I'm driving, I, I, I don't want to look at a map. Like, that's why it's kind of like why I always orient maps north because then I have a fixed point of reference and I kind of know things, but I'm always looking at landmarks and I'm trying to, you know, trying to gauge where I am, always trying to like get memorable locations and feel out which turns I'm making. I don't know. I think it harkens back to like the type of games I played when I was a kid, you know, uh, I would always just like, I loved figuring out the layouts of maps and stuff like that and kind of like putting them in my head so I would always remember them and I could know where secrets were and I would replay games a lot, so... 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's concerning. Yeah, probably. Hmm. I will say, being a passenger in a car that you're driving, like when you've picked me up from LAX when I visit and stuff before, mm-hmm. you always look like you know where you're going, but it always feels like I just got into a taxi. <laughs> Not an Uber, a taxi. And I was like, yeah, take me to, you know, take me to Studio City or something. And mm-hmm. the guy's like, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Studio City doesn't put anything in. And we just start driving. And the whole time I'm just like, he, he probably know. He knows, right? <laughs> He wouldn't just be driving somewhere. He knows. Knows how to make that extra cash. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes when you're driving, Mark, you do you like look around and you're like, oh, oh no, okay, no, I know where we are. <laughs> and everyone in the car is kind of like, huh? This is not a good time. We've been driving for two hours. What do you mean, huh? I didn't know this was the kind of response I was getting in the backseat of my own car. Like everyone's questioning my every move. It's just a little unnerving. <laughs> it's unnerving. It's perfectly nerving. Get your nerves back. It's your fault, not mine. I have no nerves. Do you guys know Jesse, our friend Jesse? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But you've met him, right? I'm familiar. Okay. So he and a friend went down to like, I think Mount Adams and went drinking a couple years back now. And uh, I guess they called a taxi or an Uber afterward. And they were so drunk that they actually passed out in the back of the taxi on the way home. And so mm-hmm. the fucking driver, instead of taking them home, does the whole 275 loop <laughs> to increase their fare. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. And they wake up like an hour, hour and a half into like what should be like a 30 minute ride. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, pull off here. And they have to pay this exorbitant tax fucking fee. And then their dad, I think Jesse's dad came to pick him up. Oh, they paid it? Fuck that. Oh, my God. I would be on the phone or the chat or whatever. I would not pay for that shit. Ugh. Well, they were drunk as fuck, so I don't think they were thinking very well at that moment. Huh. That's nuts. But, yeah, dude fucking drove them around the loop to increase their fare. To So, yeah, a lot of them do know where they're going. Oh, that's so scummy. That's why anytime I get into an Uber or a cab, I also look up the directions to make sure they're taking the fastest route. And if they're not, mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, actually, you should get on here. Make it a little bit faster. <laughs> I'm that guy. Wow. You're wow. just the worst kind of passenger. Huh? <laughs> to be fair, they've always pretty I've never actually had to do it, but I'm always ready. I question Mark, yeah. but never once did I GPS him, okay? Mm. I mm. let him do it. Well, not Mark, because Mark doesn't charge a fare for us to go somewhere. I don't care if Mark ends up in the wrong spot. I just want to have quality time. Quality time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, in LA, like the cab drivers, I feel like are in such a hurry to get their next fare because they're always busy. Well, probably not now as much. Normally, Uber drivers that they take all the middle, like inner roads in LA, and that's the fucking worst. Like, I've had like a ride back from LAX to where I was living before, and um, it's it, like GPS told them to take a left turn across a six lane road. Oh, <laughs> it's, God. It's literally like looking left, looking looking right i'm gonna inch out into traffic oh, they'll God. stop you just have people like looking at you like jesus christ this fucking thing and then like behind you like more cars are trying to like oh my chance oh we have a leader <laughs> and then you know oh, huge God. traffic and i'm sitting in the passenger seat and i'm just like eh, no please not this. <laughs> anything but this that's the worst too i've been my least favorite type of uber experience is when you're in one of those cars that's in a left turn lane where it's just hopeless like that yeah but you're one of the back ones and there's like a tiny gap and the one car at the front is like this is my chance and the next six cars are just like yes our chance <laughs> and and they just pull out into oncoming traffic and you're like ah yeah. i should never sit on the passenger side holy fuck <laughs> were you guys in the uber in boston where we made the mistake of telling the dude we were in a hurry and he drove down the double yellow line with a finger oh, middle I finger out each that. window the oh whole fucking God. way and then he demanded us give him like a thirty dollar tip before we were allowed to get out. <sighs> Dude, Ubers oh. in Boston are terrifying. Oh. The hell Never Boston? tell one you're in a hurry ever. Oh yeah, it's a challenge. Anyway, any final thoughts before I uh, award points and wrap this one up? No, but we should remember for a future episode to do like dumb childhood stories and just a whole episode on all the freshman year escapades that Bob and I had. Or- <laughs> yeah. Just like, good God. Well, this is just Hold My Beer <sighs> Part 1, then. We'll have a follow-up coming sometime down the line. Oh, man. Okay, how do I want to award points here? Mm. Mm-hmm. Bob, you, you tell stories so good. I'm just going to give you a 1,000 points for being a good storyteller. All right. Um, you got 14 for being a little bit late on the title. Mark, you got 77 mm-hmm. points. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like Mark told a story and then led to a second story that Bob helped with, but it was still like Mark drove a lot of conversation today. So however many points Mark needs to win by one point, that's how many points I award. Mark, you win. (laughs) 
I eked the victory out. You eked it out. Just By barely. being the dumbest one in the call, you win. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't do any math or anything. God damn it. Thanks, God. man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll take the win. I feel like I really made the bunk bed story by telling my part of it, but that's fine. <laughs> that's 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 I, hey, I was like, we should make that collaborative. It was it together, but, you know. To be fair, it was Mark's nose in the sex and his body at risk on the coat hangers. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and him that fell out after breaking his shoulder and his ass already. <laughs> It was a hell of a year. A lot of yeah. a lot of stuff that year, man. Oh, a lot yeah. of falling. Yeah, a lot of falling for me. That's kind of like a habit in my life. Hey, I fell out of my much lower bed too, and that was pretty scary. So, <laughs> a foot off the ground versus like eight feet. Hey, like five feet, four feet off the ground, four or five, maybe even six. I don't know. I'm stunned that I didn't get hurt. Like, cause it didn't hurt at all. Like I knocked the TV over. I fell like my shoulder landed <laughs> on the fridge. Like I landed perfectly in that little gap in between your bed and the fridge. And it was like, there was a stool there. It was like, you should have absolutely broken your neck on the oh TV God, or yeah. the fridge or something. Cause you shouldn't have lived. You <laughs> I should have lived through a lot of things. Freshman. We should both be dead. Moral of the story. <laughs> don't do dumb shit out there. Be smarter than they were. Yeah, we Looking are. at you, college freshman. <laughs> yeah, this, this podcast is a cautionary tale, if ever there was one. 100%. Please literally don't do this dumb shit. We will not be held responsible for any dumb shit you decide to do, but don't do it. Yeah, we refuse. We refuse, we refuse. to be held responsible. Just like Mark's <laughs> still not responsible for his actions, we won't be responsible for yours. 100%. All right, well, thank you guys all for listening to Distractable, brought to you by What Elf. Make sure you subscribe so you can listen to the podcast anywhere and everywhere it is. Follow Wood Elf Media for the latest updates. Big thank you to Mark and Bob for joining. I'm Wade. You can find me, I don't know, on YouTube and Twitch and stuff. Where can they find you guys? Uh, right Facebook. here. Right here. On every oh. Monday. Right here. That's true. That's true. This is the best spot. Yeah. Every Monday, download every episode on every platform on a new account and listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fraud. We can't say that. It is. Just use your own account. Your own account. Oh, did I say a new I'm account? I it. meant your main account. Yeah. Wink. Wink. <laughs> uh, 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 podcast out. You know when your eyes are bothering you, and they feel like a mix of stressed, dry, and sandpaper. Let's call it stry paper. Not a word, but you get it. And so does BioTrue. BioTrue Hydration Boost eye drops provide instant moisture for eyes like yours. Plus, they contain an electrolyte, antioxidant, hyaluronin, and no preservatives. Naturally inspired ingredients that you can feel good about. So next time your eyes get that dry paper feeling, try BioTrue eye drops. Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production with your hosts, Wired Wade, Bombastic Bob, and Macabre Mar. This week, the tantalizing trichotomic troupe confer concerning events, actions, and experiences that fill the pants and induce white-knuckled wariness. Yes, it's oh shit moments. Please prepare fresh underwear and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Distractable. I will be your host today. My name is Bob, and I forgot... I've not... You know what? Can I just say this? Mm -hmm. I'm good at the format. I have fun telling stories and stuff. I'm not a good host. Am I allowed to admit that up front? I feel like I'm the worst host of the three of us. And I know we give you a lot of shit, Wade, because you're always like, hello and welcome to Distractable. I don't know, what? You have that, like, Kate. I still think that's preferable to me not understanding how to set anything up or start an episode or give you guys introductions or anything. Man, this is a self deprecating episode, I guess. I know there's a competition between the hosts overall, too. <laughs> Uh, it's just like a it's like a sub competition. I, I yeah. keep in my own mind, and I'm losing, which I don't like. But uh, <laughs> get good. It's okay. Get good, in me. Yeah. Fucking. You could smart. you could just act like you want to lose the hosting position after you get it, <laughs> like Wade does. That's kind of Wade's bit, isn't it? <laughs> Every episode, Wade's just like, take my points. Yeah. No, I want to. I don't want to win. Uh, the world yeah. stole my hair. You can steal my format. It's fine. <laughs> 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 did the world steal your hair? Is that really how it works? It did. <laughs> it <shouldn't have> been... <laughs> I just got a text from Molly saying some teens trying to get her Snapchat. So teens are trying to steal my wife. The world <laughs> stole my hair. You're stealing my format. The house is stealing my water. It's whatever. <laughs> oh, she just needs more mud. Yeah. <gasps> wait, wait, my wife or the house? <laughs>
right, man. Look, anyway, listen. If you're here, I'm sure you know, but this is distractible. We talk about literally anything. Usually it's utter nonsense. But there's like a competition, right? I'm the mm-hmm. host, which means I'm the judge, and I will give points. Or maybe I won't, because sometimes we forget to give points. And we just pick a winner. But at the end, somebody wins. And they get the honor of hosting the next episode. Doesn't mm-hmm. really matter. But that's the pretext that brought us all together. Mm-hmm. And traditionally, we start this with like, you know, small talk or something. So how's how's everyone's dogs? D- oh, they're good. We all have dogs, right? Yeah. Ginger keeps shitting in the house. Ooh, bad dog. The house is trying to steal her shit. Oh, God. It, she, it is. The carpet is eating it. <laughs> <laughs> is your carpet growing? Is it getting stronger? It's getting replaced whenever I'm actually able to save up some money from all this stupid... Bo- have we have we talked much since I had to replace five toilets? Wait, what? When did you have to replace five toilets? That's like all the toilets at your house. Yeah. For some reason in in Ohio, some of these houses are built. They're like three bedrooms, but they're like, you know what? You need five bathrooms. And everyone's like, oh man, five bathrooms. I wish I had five. No, you don't. You don't wish you had five bathrooms. Everyone in Ohio only eats junk food, so they just constantly have the runs, right? So you need <laughs> toilets close by in case you got a diarrhea. I guess so. I don't know why there are so many bathrooms, but let me tell you, all that it means is literally more shit to clean. So (laughs) much. It's so bizarre. In my entire life, and I have owned a house, I have lived in apartments, I have never had a toilet break on me. I've never seen a toilet like just, just in my own home at least. Just Yeah, I've never seen a toilet shut down. Three of the five have broken, and I was so mad. I was so fed up because we had water damage in the same ceiling that Mormid guy was. (laughs) I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I don't care what it costs. I called and I was like, bring me five toilets. Install them. Do my bidding today. <laughs> like, oh, we can do it tomorrow. I was like, fine, tomorrow. <laughs> I literally replaced every toilet in the house because I was just like, I, I'm so fed up. I'm tired of like every six months finding more water damage. They're like, eh, we replaced the spickety spookity inside the backity backity. You won't have any more drips. It's like, oh, well, fuck right off. Because I will. That plumber who talks like that is definitely a key component of your problem, I think. <laughs> if you paid a guy to come into your house and he was all, ooh, the spickety spookity at the back of the back, <laughs> that's a red flag, Wade. <laughs> that's a bad yeah. start. Okay? Yeah, that's no good. Yeah. How did we get on this angry topic? I asked about your dog. I don't know, man. Yeah, okay. Man. I'm good, Bob. The dogs are great. God damn. Like it's my fault. Dogs are great. Yeah, my dogs are good. They're coming to set every day. They're getting lots of love. Your dogs are adorable. Yes, thank you. I don't know how my dog is because I abandoned my child. <laughs> I abandoned my boy. Man. Like on a doorstep? No, or? well, I'm in I'm in Austin, Texas right now for a quasi-extended stay doing a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, just some dumb shit or whatever. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. uh, I like Austin. Uh, yeah, it's a good town, except that it's a million degrees and a million percent humidity everywhere. I do like not abandoning my dog more, though. But yeah, I haven't seen Lexi in like two weeks. Mm-hmm. I think she's good. I, I think Mandy's been sending pictures. She seems alive. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Minimum requirements, you know. No vid. You know what? Now that I think of it, no videos. Mm, weird. She might be weekend at burning me. Mm. I'm a little concerned. Yeah, now I am too, and I wasn't before this episode. The vibe of this episode is really strange. Well, it's really good. It's pretty shit. It's, oh, you don't even know how shit it is, Wade. You don't even know, because that's enough small talk. It's time for the real meat and potatoes. And you know what? This week, I started off with some self-deprecation, admitting that I am I think I'm a subpar host at best. I have my weaknesses. You know what I'm not bad at? What I'm actually really good at is beating your asses at winning these podcast episodes. I'm too good at this shit i'm sick of it you guys need to bring your game okay you guys need to turn it up a little bit this week i don't have like a topic i'm issuing a challenge i guess if i had to if i had to give you a prompt it would be oh shit moments but i'm gonna start it by telling my own story because it's a story i'm really really proud of and i am excited for the world to know that this happened to me also i kind of hope that one specific person hears this and is like that fucking guy i knew i'd find you <laughs> I've never felt more attacked in any episode of Distractable. I have no idea. Hey, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to mix it up, trying to help you guys. You know. No, I appreciate it. I think I do anyway. Continue, oh glorious judge. Yeah, well, so I think it's pretty undeniable that I'm the greatest. And uh, just to clear it up, I know we've talked about this before. 
My fridge is fine. Please stop asking. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was very funny how mad I was. It's fine. That was a long time ago now. I don't even remember. I'm glad you cleared that up, but how's your fridge? Don't. Hi, everyone. It's me, Emma Chamberlain, the host of the Anything Goes podcast, now exclusively available on Spotify. On my show, I talk about whatever's on my mind. Sometimes I analyze topics. Sometimes I give advice. Sometimes I share my opinions. Sometimes I tell a story. Nothing is off limits. So let's get into it. Follow Anything Goes only on Spotify to get new episodes every Thursday and Sunday. If the turbulent lives of former child actors fascinate you, the audiobook memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, has it all. Prepare for the outlandish and unexpected as Nickelodeon iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy dishes up heartbreaking and often hilarious stories in her own voice. Tap the banner to hear a free sneak peek. Listen, today's story starts at a very different fridge in a very different city at a very different time. When I was a sophomore in college, I lived... Uh, with some roommates in an apartment, and I lived very cheaply. I did not have a lot of money for food. I tried to buy cheap stuff. I would buy meat that was almost expired because it was like, discounted. I was broke, but I was cheap. I was trying to live on the cheap. And uh, my favorite thing to do was to get ground beef that was like just about to expire because they mark that shit down. They basically give it away. And ground beef could be anything. You can make chili. You can make burgers. You make all kinds of good stuff. One of my favorites was to make like a like a bolognese, right? get some ground beef, just sort of brown it up, put some tomato sauce in, cook some pasta, boom, delicious dinner. I really like to push the dates, those expiration dates. And <laughs> oh, uh, no. when I was younger, I didn't understand the idea that stuff could spoil even if it was frozen. Mm -hmm. So what I, I would, a lot of the times I'd get the almost, you know, almost out of date ground meat and I would freeze it. I'd be like, good, perfect frozen in time. I still have exactly, you know, I have two days left before it expires. And uh, this one time I did that and I like forgot about it. You know, sometimes you just find stuff like way in the back yeah. underneath. I found this pack of ground meat and I could not remember when it was from. It was all freezer burned, real messed up. And I was like, sweet, it's frozen. Can't possibly have gone bad. I got a big road trip tomorrow, so I need a good dinner tonight. And they'll wake up bright and early and I'll drive over, see my buddies uh, in Indiana at Purdue University. Mm -hmm. And so I made myself some delicious spaghetti bolognese with this ground meat. And as I was cooking it, I had a little bit of a thought where I was like, hmm, it smells different. It, smell <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't smell bad, but it smells different. That's weird. Hmm. But that's not going to stop me from enjoying my cheap dinner. And then I was eating it and I was like, hmm, tastes different. Hmm. Yeah, uh huh. Uh huh, Bob. <laughs> but I don't like where this is going. I ate the whole thing because mm. I needed some Good. delicious, hearty dinner for my big road trip in the morning. It's fine. Ate it up, played some video games, whatever, went to bed, and uh, woke up the next morning, bright and early at like, I don't know, 10 o'clock, whatever was early for me when I was in college, and hopped in my car and started on my way. It was like a few hour drive from Cincinnati over to where my buddies were at school. And I started, you know, had some tunes on in the car, whatever, cruising on the highway. And if you've ever driven from Cincinnati, like through Indianapolis up to, where is Purdue? What is that city called? West Lafayette? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's if you've ever done that drive, there's fucking nothing in Indiana. Like, there's huge stretches where it's cornfields and nothing. No gas stations, no bush, like, nothing. Like, it's flat fields and a road. That is a lot of the Midwest, though. Like, even Ohio, if you aren't in one of the major cities, is mostly just flat cornfields. Yeah. That's true. There's a lot of that. I've, dri I've driven from Cincinnati to Iowa a few times. A lot of that drive is kind of like that. There's nothing going on, which is kind of nice. Not a huge deal, unless when you're right in the middle of one of the most desolate stretches of the drive, you start to get a little flippity-floppity action going on in your lower stomach regions. Mm. I don't know if you guys have ever had um, body-shakingly violent diarrhea, <laughs> but have you, ever, have you ever experienced the start of that? Is this... Uh, yeah, I'm sure we all have. You know, you're just sitting there, and just uh, something inside of you is just kind of like... And you just start to get that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And I was trying to listen to my body. I was trying to let it tell me what it needed and be a responsible caretaker. But there was nothing. I swear to God, there weren't even exit ramps. It was a straight highway for hundreds of miles that you could not get off of for any reason. I couldn't find a gas station. And I'm sitting here, time is passing, half an hour passes. The flip-flops in my stomach are getting more aggressive. It's feeling like it's wanting to go somewhere, right? It wants out. <laughs> And I just can't find a gas. I can't find a gas station or anything. Rest stop, nothing. Beads of sweat start forming on my forehead. I'm by myself in the car, uh -huh. but I'm out loud. I'm just like, ah, ah, come on, like talking, pepping myself up, trying to hold it in. <laughs> it's getting bad. It's getting desperate. Uh -huh. I considered pulling off and just running into the ditch on the side of the highway, just seeing what happened, because I don't want to get it inside my car or inside my pants. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that would be terrible if that happened. Mm. And it, it just gets, it keeps getting worse. I finally get to an exit that looks like it's maybe near a town. It doesn't have a sign or anything indicating that there's a gas station or a bathroom. But I'm like, I just, I gotta get off here and drive towards a place where there's a toilet. Even if it's just like a house, I will knock on the door and tell them urgently, the shit is either going on your doorstep or in your toilet. Please choose. <laughs> Good God. It's terrible. It's painful. I'm driving the car like squirming like uh, like I feel like I'm about to have an alien burst out <laughs> yeah. finally after I would say about an hour of not finding any place where I could stop I pull off I go there's a little small town not far from the highway and they have a gas station and I'm like yes fuck yes made it and it's one of those I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience where and I didn't realize this until I was already inside the gas station's like around back it's like an exterior door to the building you know and they have like a key. You have to get the key from the guy at the gas station and then go. So it's the least convenient type of bathroom. So I go in and I'm frantically in this store, in this gas station, just like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't see one. I go up to the guy and I'm like, do you have a bathroom? And he must think I'm out of my mind on drugs or something. I don't know what he thinks because I'm drenched in sweat, yeah. panicked, clenching. Just, I don't look good, I imagine. And he's like, yeah, we got... Uh, bath here you need the key here's the key you okay and i'm like yeah 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 that's fine just give me the key <laughs> take the key scramble out around to the back and this is where stuff really goes downhill i'm fumbling with the key Th this is where it's been a great story so far happiness and joy <laughs> Everything is contained up to this point, but at this at this moment, I'm approaching the toilet. I'm almost there. The pain in my stomach is just really intense. I get the door open. I get it closed behind myself, and I start like frantically grasping at my belt and everything. And there's there's an almost beautiful, almost enjoyable moment of release that happens right then. My pants are still fully on, and I'm trying to undo everything and get get onto the bath to toilet. And it feels just it feels joyous, right? Because finally, the pain is, is subsiding. Finally, I get to do what I've been wanting to do for an hour. And it's really, it's relief. Until I realize that I'm standing in front of the door across the room from where the toilet is with my pants on. And, and it's bad. The relief quickly turns into absolute horror mm. and a realization that there's not enough one ply gas station bathroom toilet paper in the entire universe to fix the problem that I have now created for myself. <sighs> Turns out I was not the one who had the worst the worst part of the problem. I told you I had the kind of spoiled meat. I had never had frozen meat that really spoiled on me before. This was the worst, uh -huh. probably the worst case of food poisoning I've ever had. I gave it to myself. Thank God I didn't share that food with anyone. But I that I don't want to get this podcast like banned from uh, i don't know platforms what happened to that bathroom has got to be the most unholy shit that i have ever been a part of i don't even want to describe it but like i had to give the key back to that guy <laughs> like he's the only one working right it's a small town guest it i had to walk up to that dude after having been in the bathroom for 45 minutes because there was i had to there was cleaning that was attempted i had to i had to get myself situated so i could be in public i i left my underwear they were gone i never saw those boxers again they were <laughs> sacrificed 
And I had to walk up to that dude after being in the bathroom. And he knew I was in the bathroom because he gave me the key. And I'm sure he was sitting there just like, man, I hope that dude's not doing some crazy shit in our bathroom. I hope he's not doing like drugs or something terrible. God. And I just walked up to him on the way out and literally looked him in the eye and gave him the key and just sort of nodded. Couldn't bring myself to say anything and fucking drove off. Wow. I would love to know that reaction that that guy had. I can't imagine. I also don't imagine it might have been the worst thing he ever encountered, judging by Wade's experience at UDF, but... I don't know, man. It was everywhere. <laughs> A demon was purged from me that day. Well, so... Oh, I don't want to be too graphic. I gross myself out, but, like, it wasn't one movement, right? It wasn't <laughs> one bowel movement. So, like, the first accidental, uncontrollable release with my pants on was really unfortunate and was gross. But there were subsequent moves where I was like, okay, if I move very carefully, I won't have any leakage or seepage. And I get to the toilet and then it didn't, there's the outside of the toilet, the floor, <laughs> the wall behind the toilet. What? Then I had to, I was trying to clean myself and things, right? So I used the sink and just, uh, this, we, man. We had this conversation before and it was the situation where we were like, how, how? We, Wade and I were like, how, how could this happen? And you had the answer the whole time. That's how. There's, there's no way that every other person who's done this to a bathroom gave themselves food poisoning and had the most violent diarrhea they've ever experienced in their entire life. You don't know that. You don't know There's that. No, I don't believe it. You, that they, was you a can't singular be the only experience. One. No, no, no. It cannot be. Food poisoning is too common. I, in Canada, gave myself food poisoning because I cooked meatloaf, and it was fine when I cooked it. But I left the meatloaf in the fridge for 10 days. Oh. And 10 days later, I came back uncovered, by the way. I did not have any Tupperware at this place I was staying at. And I came back to it, and there were weird white spots on it. But I said, hey, if I microwave it enough... What? If I microwave it enough... What? I said, if I microwave it enough, maybe it'll probably be okay. But apparently that's not how the toxins that become present in <laughs> food after it spoils works. You can't cook them away from having existed in the first place. This meat is green, but if I grill it till it's charcoal black, I know it'll be edible. Yeah, and thankfully my body purged that shit before it got through me. And in that night, I threw up so violently that I burst blood vessels in my face. Like, I came in, I was shooting, you know, The Edge of Sleep, and when I came, the makeup person looked at me the next day and was like, What happened to you? And I said, I don't know, please help me cover it up or something. Like, all around my eyes, there were just red splotches. And, like, a one blood vessel in my eye was, like, kind of, like, kind of burst, but it was thankfully okay up there but just like you are not the only person that has ever had this curse befall you but you were at home but and you weren't you weren't tra you weren't trapped in a car on a highway in the middle of an empty but, state but if my body had processed it enough i would have been on set and had to like in the middle of the take go <sighs> and then run <laughs> off set into the nearest bathroom and and we were we were at a location that was not what we were actually shooting at we were trying to make like this airport into a hospital hospital and i would have had to sprint through security and like go for the nearest bathroom <laughs> like it would not have been okay i don't know man this for me this is like etched into my memory like this was over a decade ago and i go to the bathroom every day and i've had some i've had some doozies i've had some stomach troubles i've eaten some stuff that didn't sit right i've had all kinds of experiences on the toilet and with myself this is the buh, not even in the same ballpark as any other stomach issue bathroom issue diarrhea issue i've ever had in my life it was like i gave birth to the nastiest juiciest baby that's ever existed I don't know, man. There's no way there's people just walking around and going to Jimmy John's and like, whoop, insane food poisoning. Have you never <laughs> been the guy that walks into the bathroom and like, you think you're the only person in there and you're like standing at the urinal or something. And then like from behind, you realize there's one closed stall as you hear like a. 
and it's just like the sound of war in that stall. I've been both of those guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that that uncommon, though. And I don't know about the ladies' room, but the men's room, it always looks like that guy has been in there and destroyed the bathroom. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'm underselling it. It was... <laughs> I I could not stop my body from expelling that stuff. <laughs> I've never experienced that before. I'm an adult... And, and, like, I've been in situations where I couldn't go to the bathroom for hours. And I just sit there, and you're just like, oh, well, it's kind of, this hurts. My stomach really hurts, but I'll be fine. I'll make it to the bath. That was like I was battling a demon, and I lost, <laughs> and it killed me. <laughs> and then it put me back together after it scooped out everything within me and placed it on the walls. I walked out of that quick stop bathroom a husk of a human. <laughs> So dehydrated that I nearly deflated. <laughs> I don't know, man. I lost 30 pounds in the 15 minutes I was in there. I call it my stank meat diet. You want to cut weight? You need to lose 30 pounds by tomorrow? Just get some spoiled meat and go nuts with it, man. God, that reminds me of the sugar-free gummy bears that you can buy off of Amazon. Oh. Oh, Do you guys know dangerous. about that? Yes. No. Oh, oh, wait, you don't know that? Uh -uh. Okay, forget I said anything. Wait, wait, you should get a whole bag and just eat them all and see what happens. Yeah, they come in five-pound bags just to have at it. <laughs> oh, God. no, they're currently unavailable. We don't know no. when or if this item will be back in stock. I don't think I want to eat these after you guys have been encouraging it. What happened? No, it'll be fun. You got all these new toilets. You got to break them in. Here, let me read oh, this. God. And because this is just how your experience, Bob, cannot be like singular because I will read the top review right now on this thing. And there are, <laughs> let me count them, 1,359 reviews, all of the same story. <clears throat> and I quote from Amazon customer. I purchased these gummy bears thinking, sounds like a nice purchase. Five pounds of delicious candy for a decent price can't go wrong. Unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way. It can go very wrong. <laughs> Within 15 minutes of consuming these high powered laxatives, my stomach was making noises that I should have seen as a message from God warning me, you should turn back around and go home. I excuse the funny feeling in my stomach as I was on a mission to replace a Keurig machine that broke from Walmart. Yes, I said it, Walmart. As I parked my car, I felt my stomach growing more agitated by the minute, making gurgling noises that struck me as unusual, but I proceeded into the store as I really wanted a new coffee machine. Dot, 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 all caps, God help me! As my situation had just gone from a, on a one to 10 scale, beginning with a three, to an instant 12, I said, I said out loud, fuck the Keurig, and I ditched my cart and went running all the way to the opposite end of the store to the bathroom while what sounded and felt like I had firecrackers exploding in my underwear. People were pointing at me while their kids were laughing, and I finally made it to the bathroom to find one stall available the handicap stall. I was simultaneously crying and pulling my pants down. I jumped on the seat, not realizing it was literally covered in urine as I began oh. opening the floodgates. Oh. Realizing oh. the evil that moments prior had begun rearranging my insides, I realized after the fact that there was no seat paper and I began holding on for dear life while begging <laughs> God to kill me. <laughs> sounding off gunshots out of my ass that most likely had people running out of the store. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> so, Bob, okay. I, I would love for you to have had a singular experience, but there is no way. That both resonates with me and sounds very familiar. <laughs> I mean, have I told the story about the apple juice? The, the apple? No. The what? So, a friend and I used to go play basketball, like, every day, year-round, at this mm. uh, neighborhood basketball court. And I always had this big water bottle. And obviously, it was always usually full of water, but uh, I forgot to bring my water bottle. And we were up there playing basketball for several hours. And uh, we walked back to my mom's house afterward. And I went to open the fridge to get like this pitcher of water to pour into a glass. And there, next to the pitcher of water, were two containers of apple juice. Like two of the big, I don't know if they're gallons or half gallon, how much it is, but you know. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, I'm really thirsty. I should get water, but this apple juice looks really good. Uh -huh. And I poured a glass, drained it. I wanted some more. I poured another glass, drained it. I don't know that I went through both containers of apple juice, but I went through <laughs> at least one and maybe two containers of apple juice. I can't remember at this point. Goddamn. And uh, I had plans to go stay at a friend's house that night. So this is probably like, I don't know, 4 or 5 p.m. I go over to a friend's 
and uh, he, he pulls out his old PlayStation 1. We get the original Diablo out and we start playing and we're listening to like the creepy eerie music and like the swinging and the dude's stupid lines. And all of a sudden my stomach <laughs> so loud that we could no longer hear the TV. And I was like, oh, I didn't feel very good. And he's like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Keep playing. He turns on like some music or whatever in the background. My stomach. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it, it just doesn't stop. Like, for an hour, it just makes all this noise. I don't have to go to the bathroom or anything. I just am sitting there unable to hear the TV or the music or even my friend over the noises my stomach is making. And uh, I was a little bit worried. I was like, oh, God, I this can't possibly end well. But nothing came of it. We went to go lay down, go to sleep. The moment I laid completely flat, my body let me know that I was not going to be okay. And uh, my friend went to sleep. I spent most of the night on his toilet. And uh, I don't want to go into detail, but I also didn't leave their bathroom looking very pretty. Uh huh. <laughs> so moral of the story, do not substitute water with apple juice if you're going to drink a metric shit ton. Yeah. Why would apple juice make your stomach so upset? I mean, it's sugary, but like... I just Googled, and there's lots of reports of where way too much apple juice or drinks that are high in sugar can cause uh, intense diarrhea just because it's just like the pure liquid, but also sugar. It messes with your entire system and just hmm. expels it out. It's, it's very strange. I also just looked up why the sugar-free gummy bears were so bad, and it all comes down to this sweetener in it called lycosin. It's the sugar alcohols, right? It's not a sugar alcohol. Is it a sugar oh. alcohol? It's a hydrogenated glucose syrup. One of the major oh. components of lycosin is maltitol, which is a sugar alcohol. But lycosol is a hydrogenated version of that, I believe. And it's like any candy with this particular sugar is just a laxative. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> and they discovered that, like, this chemical serves as an excellent laxative after all of these anecdotal things because it tastes nice and it makes your whole body explode. Oh, they taste delicious. They taste like regular oh, yeah. old gummy bears, but they're sugar-free. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Intestinal distress. Trumpets calling the demons back to hell. Guttural pronouncements so loud it threatened to drown out my own voice. 100% liquid, <laughs> flammable liquid. Napalm. I... <laughs> I bought one order for Westboro Baptist Church as a donation because we all know how much God hates irregularity. <laughs> <laughs> 40 grams of lycosin increases frequency of bowel movements. In a five pound bag, there's 2,200 oh, grams. Oh, no, man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There's oh something to be said about your stomach making noises that are louder than what your vocal cords can produce. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's that's no joke. I but I ha I actually will say I have never shit in my pants. No. I have had some close calls. I'm talking like full on. Okay. Like full on shit in my pants. I've never done it. Have you ever like like you were running for the toilet and you like pooped on the seat or something? Like you missed <laughs> no. because you were so frantically <laughs> No. no. I, yeah, there's, I just, everyone shits their pants, right? That's totally normal, right? Come I have on. not. Well, you just said you were a single year experience, but, but in my lifetime, like, I've never full on shit my pants. I have not either, I don't oh. think. I, I'm not, it's not that I'm proud to say that. I'm sure at some point in my life, I will definitely poop my pants. But to this day, I have not yet. I have not either. I will say one of the worst experiences I had was relatively recent. I uh, got some buffalo sauce from a place that i hadn't really gotten buffalo sauce from before really good but uh it was really 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 spicy and something about the way they did their sauce i, I don't know if it made it indigestible or if i just had too much of it but i will tell you on the way out it felt like i was pouring hot sauce directly on my rectum that's not that's good. never good it burned so badly and there was nothing i could do but sit there and cling on to the countertop and cling on to the shower door and just pray that the flames would burn out I, I, man, there's this one dude on YouTube called the fire breathing idiot. And I used to watch him a lot just because he just stepped up his craziness higher and higher. And the amount of spice that he would do, it got to the point he was like drinking pure capsaicin, just drops of it, just pure capsaicin. There's no Scoville rating for it. It's just capsaicin. And, um, 
he he would talk always about how he had like toilet paper in the freezer oh my ready God. to go <laughs> and i'm like how do you live like this why is this your life like i get it anything for views but oh it cannot be worth it like it can't be worth it also, is this episode, like, about pooping our pants, or is it just... I mean, it wasn't specifically supposed to be about that. It was a challenge, right? Uh -huh. Like, I, I was just hoping you guys would, would one-up I me. didn't poop my pants. But <laughs> I think what's really happened is that you've all told me that I'm I'm not special, and I'm just a guy who pooped no, his pants. No, we're all in this together, is what we're trying to say. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and I don't think we can one-up you, either. I think uh, you're not necessarily special, but I don't know that I've ever had a, a shitting experience as intense as yours was. No, definitely not. Oh, yeah, there's gotta be. Don't give up. There's gotta to be embarrassing stuff or 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 shocking things i believe in you guys you can do it i have an oh shit moment that doesn't relate yeah. anything to do it, it tangentially relates to my intestines in one way that's fair i can keep it on theme yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i had woken up in the middle of the night let's say and i had intense pain and i was like oh man maybe i gotta go to the bathroom or something and i was like oh no no that ain't it and i sat in the toilet for a while and just like pain pain and it got so bad that i had to crawl back to bed oh like on the floor literally like i couldn't stand up and at this point i still had not considered the idea that i might need to go to the hospital for some reason just in my mind that wasn't a thing so I'm just like, oh man, this sucks. This really sucks. And I crawl back into bed. And uh, this was uh, many years ago now. And my girlfriend at the time uh, noticed that I was in pain. And was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, man, only the most intense pain I've ever had in my gut. And, and she freaks <laughs> out. And uh, I, I'm i like, yeah, yeah, no, it's real bad. Been going on for hours. And he's like, what? And so uh, <laughs> we go to the hospital and they do a scan of my abdomen and they come back and they give me, you know, some drugs for the pain afterwards to make sure I wasn't faking it. They wanted to see. And they're going like, oh, yeah, no, your uh, your appendix is about to burst. It needs to be removed immediately, uh, like within now. And so they, they gave me drugs and they were prepping me for surgery. And then the doctor, as a side note, said... Also, by the way, you have a tumor, but don't worry about that right now. And it was exactly, you know, the JoJo <laughs> mean of like the to be continued, where it's like, doom, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> literally like looking at this doctor, like, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And like it's as they're giving me the drugs for surgery to put me out, so I'm just like, what? <laughs> and they leave the room, and it's just like they'll come back to take me away. But I should be like, I don't even know if I'll. They said you don't even know if you'll remember it by then. And I just remember like looking over to my girlfriend at the time, like, what happened? And then I passed out, and that was it. God. So that was my, that was my like, oh shit moment. <laughs> like going into surgery there well one you would be so casual about a pain so bad that you're crawling around on the floor a normal person in that situation goes to the bathroom it keeps getting worse they're like oh i can't i can't stand up oh god and they're like your girlfriend God, help me mark is just like oh i can't stand up oh, fuck. i'll just crawl back I'll just crawl. I'll just go lay down. It'll be fine. Like, like just I could like hear your voice. You're like, I'll just crawl back in the bed. It's fine. It's fine. Like you, you get back in the shot of the bed over a sleeping girlfriend. Mark's hand, like a little zombie hand, just like. I can absolutely see you doing that. Yeah, you I'm, fucking idiot. I mean, honestly, you're not wrong. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and the only reason my girlfriend woke up at the time is because the bed was pushed against the wall, and I usually sleep on the side that's like against the wall. So I had to like crawl over <laughs> <laughs> to get to my side again because like I couldn't do my normal like hop in from the the foot of the bed or anything like that. So I had to like. Gah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure she saw, like, a cryptid walking into bed, just like, yeah, God. <laughs> but, you know. You know, Mark, pain is usually a sign from your body that, uh, something's, something's bad. Or, no, you know, no. Something. No, no. Yeah, you're fine. I mean, you survived this long. How bad could it be, I guess? Now I, now I look at pains more seriously, so I learned my lesson. Most people in other situations might not have learned my lesson and my appendix would have exploded and then I might be dead, but who knows? There is that period of life where we feel like we're invincible and it's like, oh, something hurts. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. And like, you just kind of shrug it off. That There is like, I don't know. I, I worry a little bit more now than I used to for sure, but 
there was definitely a time where like I was like, ah, I'm not gonna go through that. The only thing I'm truly afraid of experiencing is a kidney stone. I don't want to go through that. That sounds so Ooh, bad. I don't know how people yeah. do that. That sounds terrible. I don't either. I don't want rocks in my PP. Yeah, no, no, no rocks in the PP. No rocks no, in the PP. No, no, no. no rocks oh. in the PP. No, 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 no. Did you guys ever watch, uh, was it Deadwood? Was it Deadwood? It was Deadwood. The show Deadwood. You guys not. ever see Deadwood? No. So in Deadwood, I forget if it's like season one or season two, but one of the big plot points is the saloon owner, played by that awesome actor that I love, unless he's a terrible person, then I don't know, I haven't looked into it. And I'm always, why do I feel like I need to make that caveat about anybody these days? <laughs> Just qualify it. Keep qualifying. Come on. <laughs> you know, that actor who was a really good actor, he was in like John Wick or something, but you know, I don't know his backstory. What's the internet like, done to person. us? Ian McShane. Ian McShane. That he's, guy, oh, he's a great actor, uh, unless he's terrible. <laughs> oh, I love that guy, maybe. <laughs> I'm aware of his acting skills and nothing else about his personal life. I'm sure he's a wonderful person. I also don't want to paint him as a villain. I don't know anything about him. Anyway, point, point aside, uh, one of the main plot points was he got a kidney stone, and then for like three episodes, he's in bed just like, I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. And then the last moment of it, spoilers, everybody, like he gets up as, it, like there's a pastor there that's like, please, I'm begging you, God, save this man. And, and this Ian McShane rises from the bed like, ah, 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 it's time! And he stands <laughs> over a chamber pot like as he's birthing this kidney stone baby, and it's just like, plinks into the chamber pot with this echoing clink and then also blood and it's just uh, uh, it's just uh. oh god it's a terrible this, this entire show is like about him passing a kidney stone <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that would not have been my guess. Yes, it is. And it is. <laughs> it may not have been three episodes. It might have just been one episode. But man, it felt like so many episodes. Like this poor guy. Is that why it's called Dead Wood? Because afterward his penis was broken? Probably. How could it have survived? Oh. <sighs> I just imagine, like, as the stone passes, it's like firing out of a wooden gun, and like just the tip explodes in <laughs> horrific, awful pain. Yeah, it like cut to his face, and then it cut to his legs over the chamber pot, and just this cannonball just like fell out. <laughs> 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 oh, we go back uh, to shit. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, this has not been a pleasant episode for listeners at home, I bet. A big thank you to our sponsors today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so seriously, though, what the fuck was that doctor thinking? I mean, I guess they have an obligation to tell you, but like, if I'm that doctor and I'm like, okay, I got to put this dude under sedation right now. He needs an appendectomy or he's going to, it's going to explode. That's a serious problem. And he's like. It'll be fine. It'll be, we're just gonna, just gonna yoink your appendix out. Yeah, as long as we get there fast enough, you won't die. You'll be fine. Also, you have a huge tumor. All right, see you later. <laughs> like, that can't be the best way to do that. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Because, like, I'm just imagining they put you under and you went into, like, you know, like, anesthesia fever dreams of, like, the, tu the tumor. It's like the Indiana Jones scene, but it's a tumor <laughs> rolling down a thing. And you're just like, ah, I'll put it back. I don't even want the idol. Or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, God, I don't even, like, at that point, like, they didn't know what type of tumor it was, so it could have been, like, a teratoma or anything like that. And and literally, I'm not exaggerating, that was the story. It was, your appendix is about to burst, we need to get you in surgery immediately. Also, you have a tumor, but don't worry about that right now. That is the quote. I remember it so vividly because it was burned into my brain. Sure. <laughs> don't worry about that right now. I'm like, well, how could I worry about something like that? <laughs> Get me in surgery now. <laughs> you have a broken toe. We're going to get you a cast. You're also dying. We'll talk about that one later. <laughs> you got a hangnail? Real bad. Your lungs exploded? Don't worry about that. <laughs> we need to get you in surgery. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pull a tooth. Also, your heart exploded. Uh, as they're, like, giving you the, the nitro, you start to go under. You're like, but you're a dentist. I don't know. Congratulations, it's a baby boy. Also, your family's dead. We'll talk about that one later. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like there was a better way to go about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly everything worked out for the best. So. God, I love the fucking good news, bad news angle. <laughs> this is my favorite <laughs> joke set up now. <laughs> Actually, no, it's bad news, worse news. <laughs> it's a baby boy. <laughs> it's the baby boy, also your heart exploded. <laughs> See? Bad news, worse news. Bad news, worse news. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Are you just going to one-two punch me like that, Doc? Yeah. This hurts. 
my ego to admit, but that's probably a more singular experience than my apparently super common uh, demonic diarrhea situation. Demonic diarrhea. <laughs> Man, it felt like I was a different person. I don't know. It comes out speaking in tongues. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to you got to think like in human history throughout all of us before refrigeration or anything. Sorry, Bob, you okay? I mentioned a refrigerator, you all right? How's your fridge? It's fine. How's your fridge? It's fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> before refrigeration or anything, if someone was like starving, imagine someone like actually starving and they come across like this carcass and it's obviously not okay, but they're so hungry, they're like it's either die or experience my very regular occurring horrible explosive diarrhea. And he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm eating tonight. <laughs> I always wonder, like, if you imagine who had the worst diarrhea in all throughout human history, like, where would you look? Like, at what point in time would that have occurred? It's got to be, well, I'm no historian, but it's got to be, uh, like, peasants, basically, right? My mind goes to medieval times, sort of generally, but, like, it's just got to be peasants from every era because they... They don't get processed foods. They don't get the high cuts of meat. They get whatever shit's left. You're eating, like, cabbage that was in the street, and the street is the sewer, by the way, in old times. Or the street is just mud and shit mixed together <laughs> that you walk on. I don't know. It's, like, you know, it's horrifying. There's no sanitation for a long time in human history. But, yeah, that must have just been constant. Yeah. If you were of a lower class, if you were a peasant or otherwise of, like, the low class in, in whatever era... You ate garbage. Ugh. Yeah, absolutely. And when everything was run by horses, you know, like, they don't really wait for a toilet. They just, in the street. Not only was sewer in the street, but also the roads were powered by horse poop. Like, that's just the way life was. Powered by? Yeah, powered by. Well, and like, humans have known what fertilizer is, right? Yeah. That animal manure is fertilizer, that that's, that's beneficial. Humans have not had running water. In modern times, they still basically put poop on food to help it grow. Yeah. It's chemicals and it's more advanced. But, like, if you get, like, some organic lettuce, it very probably had some kind of manure or something as part of its, you know, process. Yeah. But you can wash that shit off. I get in the sink. I get the sprayer on. I wash every little speck of anything off of there until it looks like it's a nice, you know, dew-covered, freshly clean. They didn't clean shit. Literally. They didn't clean <laughs> shit. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> For hundreds or thousands of years of humanity's existence, there was no such thing as cleaning. Yeah. You just ate it. They were just tougher than us back then. You know, we're so weak nowadays. We don't we clean our vegetables. What we need to do is just go and actually grab the muddy shit and just eat it raw and toughen ourselves up again. Are you my dad? <laughs> we do not condone such behavior. And also, thank you, our sponsors, once again. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Mark. There's been a lot of diarrhea in human history. Mm -hmm. I just joined in that beautiful shared experience that is humanity. <laughs> That's not even a sad story. It's a happy story. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't say it like the 25 minute mark being like, hey, for all those of you listening, now's the part where we're not going to talk about poop anymore because we sure did talk <laughs> about poop the whole goddamn episode. <laughs> it's fine. Throughout human history, billions have lived. And billions have diarrhea. Welcome to the journey to the human rectum. <laughs> it's, it's like David Attenborough narrated, <laughs> like Planet Earth style, grand documentary, but it's just about how much diarrhea there's been in the world. Oh my god. Starts off in like the pipes of the toilet and you go up the diarrhea waterfall straight into the butt and just all of a sudden. At the end of every segment, David Attenborough is just like, and that is how humanity survived this period. Even though everyone nearly died of dehydration because of all the diarrhea. Ah, oh, the Cetaceous <laughs> period. Now we move on to the 18th century. God, wait, hang on. Sorry, sorry to shift courses. I don't know why I'm still going down this rabbit hole. I'm looking at Lycosin, and the creator of Lycosin has it on their website. And <laughs> the statement for it is, Lycosin, it's a registered trademark. Maltothal liquids are widely used as a vehicle and humectant for syrups. And I'm like the fuck does humectant mean? And I scroll down on the website and it says functional properties, excipient, humectant, vehicle. And I'm like, what the what hell is that? The mean? fuck is this liquid? <laughs> like, it's, it's literally like excipient. I don't know what that means. <laughs> humectant. I don't know what, what that means. Happening? Vehicle. I think I know what that means, <laughs> but I guess I don't know what it means in this context. Like, what the fuck is this? This is a product made by aliens and they're like, I can't believe they're actually doing it. <laughs> Quick, make a website, put some fake words in there. Yeah, some, some really creative 
non-certified, non-official <laughs> chemist was just like, yes, yes, it's a, it's a great chemical. It's a, it's a humectant. Mm. It uh, means that inside of humans, it ectentates them. And uh, <laughs> also, it's an outstanding vehicle. I know that already has a meaning, but in chemistry, it means something else. It's excipact certified. No, that's a different word. There's excipient and excipact certified. Multicompendial. What? <laughs> these, I'm reading these it's words. <laughs> Nutraceuticals. <laughs> I love multi-compendial foods. You guys lost me and I'm still looking at leukemia, leukemia or whatever the hell you said you were looking at. Yeah, it's, it's functional properties. Excipient humectant vehicle. Other properties and benefits. Excipact certified. Multi-compendial. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want more lycosin, mom. I don't want to take the lycosin. <laughs> I want some apple juice. Oh my god. I'm craving some gummy bears, man. Tell you what. What if we combined it? What if we dissolve the gummy bears in the apple juice and just drink it all? Oh man. Been in Texas. Been eating a lot of brisket. I need to clean it out. Oh. Dissolve the gummy bears into the apple juice. Mix that into the bolognese. Eventually, if you take enough different types of like laxative, they're gonna cancel each other out, right? Yeah, it comes it's like uh it's like time. Eventually it comes back around. Yeah. It's, it's not linear, it's it's circular. Yeah. Also, I realized why lycosin shouldn't be in foods because I'm looking at the applications and it says oral dosage for pharmaceuticals, lozenges, medicated confectionery, syrup suspensions and liquids. This isn't for food. <laughs> why did this thing become the thing they put into sugar-free gummy bears? What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, flavor. Oh, God. I mean, it tastes delicious. If that's what that chemical tastes like, then sure, I guess. But what the fuck? <laughs> ah, they have a another chemical called neosorb sorbitol liquid <laughs> neosorb is my favorite like power rangers thing they did oh my god you know what their sword was called the neosorb oh yeah that's no it. i'm uh i'm actually gonna be doing some pokemon neosorb pack openings <laughs> i'm getting an early booster box i said pokemon i said power rangers oh wow lucky man you got the neosorbs oh man I only got the manitols. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, some kleptos or perlitol. <laughs> uh, what is kleptos? <laughs> Do I want to know? I want to know. Kleptos. Ah, not only is it an excipient, it's a solubilizer. <laughs> Sol solubilizer? No. Solubilizer? Solubilizer. Are these real words? Yep. Solubilizer. <laughs> you could actually just be making this up, and neither way that I could tell. <laughs> even remotely yeah. excipient solubilizer stabilizer i know that one and a taste making agent <laughs> that's it does that mm. just mean it has a flavor i don't know man i don't <laughs> go to a restaurant what kind of taste making agents do you use for your food could i get more taste making agents in here <laughs> or is this chemical just really fashion forward he's a taste maker he was carrying a man's purse before it was cool he's a taste maker yeah look you sort of told the story wade is that your submission Man, we are up. I, there's been so much shit. I, yeah, you know what? Yeah, whatever I said. Yeah, you can have that. Your apple juice story. Oh, yeah. I hate to shut down the chemistry talk because I know that's just <laughs> endlessly fascinating for you listeners, I'm sure. But uh, I feel like we're crashing into the end of this bad boy. Okay. I feel like I've been humbled. Oh, yeah. I thought I was special. No. I thought that that bathroom and I shared something and that whoever cleaned that up was kind of in on it, but not in the same way. But I'm not special. It's like they say in first grade, everybody poops. Sometimes it's liquid. They didn't tell me that in first grade. But uh, I assumed I, my story would be hard to beat. And I think you guys proved me wrong. I gotta be honest. I especially think Mark proved me wrong. But Hey! I didn't give any points yet. I'm just saying. Okay, I, never mind. I retract everything. I liked your story, Mark. But that doesn't mean that you win, you know? No, you know what? I'm willing to concede. I think Mark is shittier than I am. Hmm. Uh, but that's, I mean, that could be the title for this episode. Yeah. Who's the shittiest? <laughs> I thought I was the shittiest. Uh, and when you started your apple juice story, Wade, I thought you were going to be the shittiest. I might have been. And I give you points for that. A moderate amount of points. And then Mark had the very hilarious and only vaguely shitty story about his poor appendix that really just took hell of a turn. Still not shit related, but I would say that your surprise tumor as you were going under anesthesia, probably the shittiest story, Mark. 
All right. So congratulations. Is that official? You are officially the shittiest of the three of us. <laughs> yeah. Wait. No, um, no, I agree. You should be happy about that. Nicely uh, done, dude. I think I think it's something to celebrate. Uh, well, job. I don't feel too celebrational about it. No, I think you did. I think you did a shitty job, Mark. Uh, shittiest job I could have hoped for. Okay. You really, I agree. You really shit the bed. Right. Yeah. You know? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Crappy performance like that deserves a win. All right, I just want to I want to end this by saying, remember how I said I'm a bad host? Mm -hmm. I still think that. This is a terrible topic. <laughs> I'm sorry we talked about diarrhea for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> I really I really didn't think that one through. Disclaimer, put this at the end. Don't eat while you listen to this. Yeah, put that right at the very end. Please don't have eaten while you had been listening to this. <laughs> That's going to be the end of this one. Thank God I don't have to host next time. I might throw in the future just so I don't have to host again. <laughs> I'm terrible, guys. But, uh, yeah, listeners, thank you for listening. If you're still here, you really like poop. And uh, make sure, also, you're following the podcast, or you tap the plus sign, or you're subscribed, or whatever. Wherever you listen to this, make sure you it tells you, because every Monday there's a new episode, and you don't want to miss out. Because you'll miss great content like this. It's just the best. <laughs> I don't know if this is the episode we want to plug or podcast oh no this is what you can expect i'm let's just let's get out of here oh. you can find wade at lord minion 777 or some variation oh, of that on websites don't plug me. you can find mark at markiplier no. on markiplier.com mm -hmm. slash youtube yeah. or whatever your website is don't look for us please don't look for us don't perceive us if they stuck around for this long i don't know if we want them to watch our other content i'm really sorry guys it was a shitty episode bob podcast out <laughs> <laughs>